Thank you, Lord. Well, you can be seated. Listen, I, you know, I'm, I'm just, I really am, I'm blessed by all of those who give themselves, give their time to minister in the house of the Lord. Uh, you know, if you want to be skilled at anything, you're going to give a lot of time to it. And, you know, too much of what God's people have done is they just kind of give, you know, it's just kind of a sit in, you know. And the Lord wants it to be more than just a sit-in and a jam session, so to speak. Father's looking for us to raise up some serious talent in the house. He's looking uh, to raise up some people who are skilled, some people are, who are highly trained. You know, I really wanted the 49ers to win today. But I'm telling you right now, the Seahawks just stomped all over them. There's just no way around it. And uh, I don't like them. They're not my team, you know, kind of thing. But uh, reality of it is, is they just, they're just skilled. they just highly trained. That's all there is to it. And, uh, you know, I don't like all of the temper and all the arrogance that I see there. It kind of like, it doesn't, it's, for me, it's not necessary. But I think that what really God's looking for right now, is looking for some people who would be willing to spend enough time in his presence. I mean, you know, if... I was so, I've been so blessed. My son will be here next weekend. I, you know, I praise God for what everybody's doing. But my, my son didn't give himself to music. He gave himself to ministry. And, uh, you, know, he, you know, he would probably, he probably spent, you know, three, minimum three hours a day in it. And then many times, you know, it would just been all day long. And, and when you see him getting prepared for, you see my son even to this day being a very accomplished musician. When he gets, when it's time, you know, he, he's going to do the meeting. I mean, he's up early in the morning. That guitar is going. He's getting himself all tuned up for the things of the Spirit. And, you know, those, that anointing doesn't happen. The expression and the flow of the anointing doesn't happen just because, you know, the Lord loves you. That, it, that anointing begins to get developed, becomes developed in our life. That's why we have the school of the Spirit. That's why there is the school of the prophets. That's why the Holy Ghost has come to be our teacher, to school us, to train us. But you know what? If, you, you know, if you're not willing to be trained, you just a drop out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you don't want to drop out. I mean, you don't, I mean, God loves you. And Father, just, just my goodness, you know, he'll love you. My, just, it's not a question of Father's love and his mercy and his grace. It's a question of whether or not we really are interested in having all of the things that belong to his kingdom and his rule. Father wants us to rule and reign with him forever. That's just the kind of value that he has for us. The kind of value that he has for us is he wants to bring us all into a place where we function in the same power and authority that he has. But that doesn't happen because you're sitting around in your living room and you love Jesus. That happens because you're willing to be trained. You're willing to be schooled. You're willing to be developed by God. I've fought, we found it over and over again. The people who pray the least are the people who need to pray the most. The people who read the word the least are the people who need to word, read the word the most. How many of you are in Second Chronicles with us right now? Would you raise your hand? How many of you are not quite there yet? Raise your hand. Okay, good. How many of you are past that? Raise your hand. Praise God. I love to see that. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. I mean, who's crossing the finish line first kind of thing? Because reality of it is this. The reality of it is, is the more you give yourself to meditating on these things, the more you begin to understand. It's far deeper than any other subject you've been acquainted, acquainted with. It's far deeper than any other. I mean, you know what kind of grades you made in school, okay? This is way beyond that, okay? This is way beyond that. I mean, it's, you know, some people can ask a little, you know, elementary school questions like who is the mother of Jesus, okay? Yeah, everybody's going to get that, okay? <laughs> How many stones did Daniel... I mean, uh, did David pick up? Everybody's going to get that. I should have went ahead and went with Daniel. But nonetheless, what kind of den did they throw Daniel in? You're going to get, people are going to get that. But this is far, far, far deeper. Gone out of his word ministers to us how to move in the realms of the Holy Ghost. How to move in the realms of miracles and signs and wonders. How to move in an authority over devils, over, over elements. <laughs> how to move in an authority over sickness and disease. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, uh, CNS experts are in the house of God, not, a, not in the laboratory. Central nervous system disease experts, you know. Uh, people who are expert in cancer. Uh, 
the cure of it and other orphan diseases. They go to Mount Zilabaya and in Mount Sterodale. Hallelujah. And an expert in, in seeing the development of, of deaf ears. Uh, the organ of the ear no longer functioning and seeing that uh, miraculously restored. Praise the name of the living God. Father wants to skill you and me in moving with that which the Holy Ghost is doing, hearing the sound of His voice, understanding how to flow with, with the things that He is uh, doing and, and the things that He's <laughs> bringing to pass and, and developing. There's a flow. There's a... There's a there is a, a reason to what he is doing. There is a way uh, to, uh, the cooperate, to cooperate with God and, and to ultimately have this wonderful demonstration of the Spirit in your life. And so that's why the Spirit of the Lord says covet above everything. Just covet it and, and want to have these things more than anything else. That which is spiritual. That's what, the, that's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. He said covet the spiritual. Covet, covet the realm of where the Lord wants to come minister to you in dreams and visions. Where he wants to show you the reality of what's really going on. People put their t time and, and effort into studying things that really, you know, it looks like that it's an explanation for what you're observing. But then it ultimately, you know, comes out that that isn't it. And they have to make another revision of the book. And that can, goes on. There's only one revision of the, there's only one vision of the Bible. uh -huh. There's only one. There's not a re, there's not a revision. Revision number two, three, four, five. Uh, well, God made a mistake. I mean, we correct that because it didn't really. You know, you don't find anywhere in the Bible that says that the earth is flat. Uh, oops. Uh, you know, you know, you don't find you don't find in the Word of God any contradictions against the raw reality and bare essentials of life. You don't find it. In fact, the Lord said he sits upon the circle of the earth. He, so when everybody else said it was flat, he said it was round. Anyway, <laughs> Isaiah prophesied that back, you know, my goodness, to almost 20, that would be about 2,600 uh, years ago as well, 2,500 years ago. Just before the exile, it would be about 2,600 years ago. Hallelujah. What is, what are you gonna, how are you going to let the Spirit of the Lord develop you? Are you guys going to be able to get the lights back on or do they burn out? They burn out. Well, you'd figure we had enough electricity in the house. Were they left on all day or something? Can't figure it out. Am I just going to have to stand over here then? I just stand over here. I have to stand on this side so people can see. My wife is very happy about that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I'm, I'm just an expectation for some of you tonight to step over into a realm that you don't even know exists. Something I'm trying to try to talk to you about, it won't be even meaningful. Be like telling the Inuits about trees that are up past the tree line that are in the tundra. They've never been outside the tundra. There's many Inuits that have never been outside the tundra. They can tell them about trees. They've never seen a tree in their life. You can tell them about the redwoods all you want. They just like try to imagine it. Try to distinguish the, the difference between a redwood and a ponderosa pine, and they're not going to get it. Or an oak tree. Now, we want to talk to you in the realms of the things of the Holy Ghost. We want to activate things in your life that is there. If you've called upon the name of the Lord, and you've been made a new creation. And then especially those of you who have been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in that heavenly language, but have never got passed out of the language and excelled. See, Paul said, what does it profit you if I come speaking in the language of the Spirit? And I don't speak to you with, by knowledge, by revelation, by prophecy, and by doctrine. And, of course, we think that doctrine really is where you took Strong's exhausted concordance, went, looked up every word on the, on, in, in the concordance, and then finally came to a conclusion. No, doctrine is the teachings of the Holy Ghost. Doctrine, doctrine the word for doctrine is literally teachings, instructions. And by, by definition, by rather connotation, it is the teachings or instructions of the Holy Ghost. Uh, so tonight, 
you know, we, we come to you not just speaking with tongues only or the heavenly language, but we come to you speaking by knowledge. And Always, for me, by and large, excels into something like knowledge or revelation <laughs> or prophecy. See, when is translated or interpreted, rather, uh, then it is prophecy. It's equivalent to prophecy. That's the interpretation of tongues. And so you're sitting around in a place where every service, there's tongues and interpretation of tongues. Every service. And we want you to become touched by it. We want you to be touched by it. Somebody said, how do you interpret that? How do you interpret that? is going forth, and you literally hear, you literally hear, as it were, you hear the message. You hear something being said. It's like it makes sense to you, and you understand it. You don't know how you understand it, but you understand it. It is the most glorious thing. And you will be, you sit in every meeting, almost every meeting. I believe it is without fail every meeting. There is tongues in song and interpretation in song. This morning, how do we know what to preach? Because there was, a tongue, there was tongues in the song and interpretation of the tongue. And then we went with the Holy Ghost because we heard the Spirit of the Lord say, I'm pleading with men. He's, we were, began to sing. He, he, he's high and lifted up. We began to sing about the beauty and the glory of His love and that, he pleading, that He's pleading with His people. He's pleading with the people. And his train fills the temple. And when you say, you say, well, by you could say, well, that is a that is a verse of scripture. Well, it is verse of scripture. About everything the Holy Ghost says is a verse of scripture. <laughs> You'll find it somewhere. About everything that Jesus said. I was talking to, you know, some Jewish guys one day, and they said, Well, oh, everything that Jesus said was already written. I said, No kidding. That's how you know he's Jesus. What are you talking about? You just prove, well, you just saved me a whole, a whole bunch of exegesis time, a whole bunch of, of proof providing time. Okay? Yeah. He, he only gave one new commandment. We gave one new commandment. He says, I'm empowering you now to do something greater than uh, that man's ever been able to do before. And you know what that is? He said that you can love one another with the same love that I love you. Now, see, people just say, oh, well, you know, we're going to love, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, that's really good, but Father's done elevated it. You, you got to catch up. Run, run, catch up. Run, catch up. Huh? We did a new covenant now. Come on over here. Father's empowered us to live in his life, to fill us with the same expectation, same glory, same flow. Oh, God. Hallelujah. See, for me, I have to be very careful. For me, I, there is, I, I, you know, I, uh, in every meeting, the word of knowledge will come to me about what people are doing, what's going on in people's lives. And when you, when you, and then the discerning of spirits will work. And sometimes it's very distracting. It's like, it's really distracting, you know, when you're studying, right? And somebody's got the television blaring. Are you with me? Or when you're talking on the telephone and a couple of people screaming in the room. Have anybody, anybody noticed that was distracting? That's what it's like sometimes, being having the gift of the, of the word of knowledge, knowing what was going on in people's life, knowing what, having the discerning spirits. And because many times what, what I want to do is I, when we, ste we step into a function, a, a realm in the, in the church, that there, all the fullness of God is available for anyone who knows how to reach in and take hold of that and touch that realm. And then, you know, we want to be able to address these issues with people. And so God gives us the capacity to do it in a general way. But listen, as we're doing this, and maybe as, as, as the Holy Ghost is addressing a person's need or an issue that exists in the atmosphere of some people's lives, what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to grab a hold of the flow of the Holy Ghost. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, I pray in Jesus' name that you find yourself constantly handling the holy things. So that every dimension of your life sizzles with the holiness of God. Sizzles. Sizzles with the holiness of holinesses. Hallelujah. Um, um, the more you're around holy things, the more you understand holy things. Holy things aren't the ritualistic ideas of how people dress. 
Aren't the realist, you know, the ritualistic things of, you know, religious ideas and philosophies? Holy things, holiness is something that you begin to participate with and have and understand as you interact with God the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And there are a lot of, there's a lot of things running interference with it. You know, there's a lot of people in trouble. They're in trouble. There's a lot of people in trouble. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to warn you right now. There's a lot of folks in trouble. People are always casting, casting stumbling blocks before men. They're saying, oh, I disagree with that, or oh, come, let's go do this, or oh, come, let's go do that. And don't know, and many times they do know, do know but other times they don't know. They're actually drawing people's hearts away from God. I, I, I tell you where the safe place is. Always draw people into a place of love and consecration and commitment to God. Draw them into a realm of interaction with holy things, of desiring, hungering, and thirsting after the things of the kingdom. You know, the riches that Father has for us. And, you know, I really want to talk about the things of the Spirit tonight with respect to you functioning in the gifts of the Spirit and the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. But before I get to that, I, just, I want to just kind of lay some groundwork and just talk to you about how Father is richly providing for us, how much He loves us and, and how much He wants to bless us and, and all that He wants to... Uh, pour out upon our lives. When you begin to read, for example, Second Chronicles, and you begin to read about all that God did with Solomon's life, wasn't it amazing? I mean, even the nails that he used were pure gold. He didn't use no. Uh, he didn't use <laughs> tin nails. He did not use um, you know iron nails, copper gold nails. I mean, everything. I mean, come on, man. That is just. That, that he had that decked out. He had the most beautiful hardwood that existed. He had the most beautiful, you know, um, stone work, marble stone work and ivory. And I mean, God just blessed him. And he said, Lord, just, I just want to understand. I just want enough wisdom to know how to properly direct your people to serve you because this is an amazing job you've given me here that I'm supposed to stand in your stead and direct your nation that represents your kingdom. See, Israel at that time became the first real, you know, personified manifestation of the kingdom of God in the earth. I mean, of course, that is what the church is supposed to be, and there are seasons in which we look like it. And I pray that uh, your heart would become so desperate and earnest about the movings of God that you would be a part of participating with that, activating that, seeing that take place again. Because God doesn't do it outside of consecrated people. He didn't bring forth Jesus through some person's life who was not consecrated to him. He brought through, forth Jesus through a young virtuous virgin that gave herself as a part of a family of God and gave herself to holy things. Every moving of God, God, the Word of God did not come by just people who were busy, occupied with their everyday life, doing whatever it was that suited their fancy or thrilled their own purposes. He spoke through holy men who had consecrated to Him. I mean, you think about all that God did through Samuel. Look at a mom whose value of her child was to consecrate them wholly to God, to learn, to sit before the Spirit and the presence of the Lord, to minister to the Lord so that ultimately he could minister on behalf of God. So that whatever he said, God did it. I mean, it was at the level, it was at the point that Samuel was so trained in God, so trained in the things of God. He didn't have to hear Father say something. He said it, and the Lord didn't let any of his words fall to the ground. Any of his words fall to the ground. Everything he said happened. It came to pass. And fact of it is, is when we read in the Bible, God and Jesus doesn't talk to us about some religious activity. He said, I have ordained you. I have called you. I have elected you. I'm going to put all the words in there, okay? I've chosen you. I'm talking from John chapter 15, verse 16. To bring forth fruit. And this is the fruit that whatever you say, whatever you ask, Father, he would do it. You know, Elijah stands in a place with God, says, it will not rain except for by my word. It's pretty radical, isn't it? First Kings chapter 
It's 18, right? Pretty radical stuff, isn't it? To be in the place, to stand here in the place of being a part of those who occupy an heirship with God, an inheritance with God, co-inheritors with Jesus Christ. He sent us forth to represent him, to stand in his stead, to lead people in his way so that none would be lost on that day, so people wouldn't be, you know, turn here and turn there. I've seen so many people turn away from God because of the influences of so-called Christians. It would better that they not entered into life than to cast a stumbling block from before one of the least of these, which means to turn them away, to cause them to stumble, cause them to err away from the truth. Huh? Because they decided they didn't want to go to church. And then, you know, here's a young child, Christian, somebody just come fall in love with the Lord, just looking at this person, that suddenly they thought really knew God, and suddenly, you know, <laughs> all of this, they're, they're looking at a life that is a terrible example, and it has a t t tremendous impact. Preachers falling away, doing terrible things with big ministries, you know. That's all sad, but reality of it is, the only thing that is going to really make the difference is when there's soon people who are called by his name, who have experienced his presence, so they say, you know what? With total abandonment, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to go all in on this. Yeah. I'm going to have everything that God describes in the Word. He's given it to me. I want it. I'm going to have it. I'm going to be able to live a life where free from condemnation. You know what a life free from condemnation is? Jesus described it. I always do those things which please the Father. There is no condemnation in there. He was talking about there is no condemnation, no guilt, no sense of sin. Amen? Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Having a conscience void of offense, I always do those things that please the Father. Well, you're going to have to go ahead and get with it. I mean, I praise God for the people who set a goal. If you don't set goals, you're not going to get there. Huh? You're not going to get there. You're just going to go loosey-goosey with the thing and never get anywhere. Huh? Yeah, you, you know, the, there's very few people that are self-disciplined. You've got to be around folks say, look, get to studying because we're going to give you a pop quiz at any time. And then we're going to post your grades for everybody to see them with the name on them. I don't know if they do that anymore, but, I mean, they still did it when I was in school. Of course, I'm still in school. I can't seem to get out. I don't know. What. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I love the school that I love the most is the school of the Spirit, where I learned how to do signs and wonders and miracles, where I learned how to break down every demonic spirit, where when the witch doctors and the shamans come to the meeting, they fall out under the anointing. Oh, yeah, I've been in meetings where they come and they did their voodoo and they had the birds dive bombing the people, but I'm going to tell you right now, what happened the next night? Ah! Ah! Yeah, I'm going to tell you, be standing there ministering 15, 20,000 people and the shamans start calling in the birds to start doing crazy things. Huh? It's a little bit, it's a little bit intense while you're standing there proclaiming the word of the Lord. But God, in the midst of that, God does signs, wonders, and miracles. And, and the, at the end of the whole conversation, they flat out, man. They flat laid out, can't move, paralyzed. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all we just did was preach the gospel. Huh? I, I, I know Monday. How to say it to you. How to be you. Oh, I, I love the idea of going from house to house, knocking on the door and saying, is there anybody sick in there? It's the best way to preach the gospel. Anybody in need? Anybody here hurting? You pain? Anybody got any addictions in here? God's come to your house today. You know, I've never been turned away with that. Every time the Lord's ever sent me any place, I'd like to do it more. I'd like to have a full-time ministry going from door to door. God's got me doing other things. I wish you would take up that ministry. Going door to door. Just knock on the door and say, listen, I'm here to pray for you. Is there anybody sick? Financial needs, problems, torment, pain, anything, you'll be surprised what happens. But you're going to have to be equipped and trained to do that. You can't stand there at the door and say, I don't know if anything's going to happen or not. <laughs> oh, you need to be equipped. You need to be, at that, you need to be aware that you need to be consciously aware and trained. Hallelujah. That you're heir of God. I'm an heir of God, co inherited with Jesus Christ, sent to do the works of the Lord Jesus. I mean, when we read the book of Acts, we're reading the Acts of the Holy Ghost. That's where it all goes down. That's where the excitement is. That's where a, that is where a church that works is being shown how it functions. <laughs> now, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because so many people, 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 God, listen, God's calling you a place to come, 
come apart with him into a solitary place, and the world's going to keep you real busy. Now you've got all these things to do. Well, that's fine, moms. As long as you're raising up people that are going to shake the earth, shake the, shake, you know, the nations of the earth with the power of God. But I haven't seen much of that. Everybody I ever see that raises up people that shakes the nations of the earth, they themselves are shaking the nations of the earth. Because these things are transferred. You know, the God, what Father does is he puts the, he chooses, Holy Ghost chooses to put the anointing on certain people. He chooses. I'm going to anoint you, I'm going to anoint you, I'm going to anoint you, I'm going to anoint you with special anointings. He gives it a general anointing of salvation, but he gives special anointings so that the church may function in the ministry of Jesus. And he gives that special anointing then that can then be transferred to everybody who hooks up with the anointing in that person's life. But the only way you can hook up with that anointing is through this thing called love. And this thing called love produces honor. It produces submission it produces uh, you know servitude i mean you know it's just that those are the things that we most plainly see in jacob's and forgive me in joshua's life as he's ministering to moses those are the things that we plainly see in elisha's life as he ministers to elijah and elijah and elisha they are very great um type uh, or i'd say typology of Jesus and the church. And whereas, you know, Elijah gave to Elisha or allowed Elisha to step into, in participation really, with uh, his commitment and consecration to the Lord, to step into a double portion of his ministry and his anointing. Whose idea was that, by the way? Whose idea was it to have a double? It was Elisha's. Elijah says, what do you want from me? Elisha was bright. He, you know, up until that time, you know all he did? He ain't did nothing. Talk about a one-man show. It was truly a one-man show. You know what, God, you know what, you know what Elijah let Elisha do? He said, my hands need washing. Pour some water on them. Okay, that's good enough. Here, we'll dry them off. Get the stuff. Let's go. Huh? That was his ministry. And he one day turned to the Tishbite and said, what do you want from me? And Elisha said, because he cleaved to him, he said, I tell you right now, you're not getting out of my sight. I didn't burn my oxen. I didn't roast my oxen and leave my career for nothing, buddy. You threw your mantle over here on top of me, and I hadn't gotten to do anything up to this point. All I've got to do is follow you around and get in trouble with you. I haven't got to do anything. I have not got to prophesy. I am not got to sing a song. Nothing. So Elijah tries to send him away. He says, I'm going to go down to Jordan. Why don't you just go see your mama? Why don't you go visit your relatives? He said, surely as my soul lives, you're not getting out of my sight. What do you want from me, Tishbite? I want double what you got. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is a great expression of humility. I want double of what you got. You know why it's a great expression of humility? Because it's a desire to have those things that belong to God. See, that is true humility. True humility is to passionately want and go after those things which God has willed. Because humility is not defined in, in any textbook outside of the realm. And, and in relationship, it's really not defined outside of the realm of interacting with God and being around Him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody, it's just loan words for everybody else. Are you listening to me over here? You know, when you look at all the glory that, that God gave the song, he said, just, I just want wisdom to be able to direct your people. Do you want wisdom to be able to direct God's people, to be able to influence God's people? Do you want to take a hold? Listen, do you want to take a hold of God so that your own life would be preserved and saved? And also be used by God to preserve and save other people's lives as well. I know how much you want to save your own life. I know there's a little bit of trouble. You're going to be reaching for 911 quickly. There's a little bit of problems. You're going to be calling. Hey, help! You're going to call out for men to come rescue you. Oh, yeah, you are. Yes, you are. I, 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 come on now. Huh? 911. Jesus, help us. 
But man can only help you so much. And God says, vain is the help of man. Father, Father goes in far, so far as to say, cursed is the person who trusts in the arm of flesh. You're going, to be, you're going to be immensely let down to start off with. Second of all, because now your heart's not right with God and you're not looking to where you could really be helped. Rather, you're looking, I mean, you know, Jesus, help us to, to Beelzebub. You're sitting over to Ekron to inquire of Beelzebub whether or not it's going to be okay with you or not. And disregarding that the Lord is in Israel. Disregarding that his prophet Elijah is standing there. And other great men of God are standing there. I'll tell you just what you need to know. It's pretty radical, isn't it? Jeremiah said, cursed. <coughs> cursed. Cursed is the man who puts his trust in. <clears throat> and the arm of man. He says, blessed are those, they who trust in the Lord and make the Lord the sole object of, his, of their trust. This is, the, this is your big challenge. This is your big challenge. This is your big challenge. And then that's why all of a sudden you get over there into Matthew chapter 6 and Jesus is pleading. He's saying, look, guys, you're going to have to stop living like you've been living and making it all about you know, your daily life and your provision, the clothes that you're going to wear and the food that you're going to eat. He said, this is what all the nations, this is what the goyim, this is what the people who have no understanding do. He's really dealing with us about our trusting him. He says, I want you to turn your heart towards me and trust me. I want you to believe that your heavenly Father cares for you. And he goes and he says, look at Solomon in all of his glory. Go and read in 2 Chronicles chapter 1 and 2 and look at what all God did. Look at, it, look at the administration. I mean, the Queen of Sheba and others came and looked at, at the administration of, of so Solomon's kingdom and all the wealth and all the glory. And they just said, this, this, there's nothing like this. This is the most amazing thing. And the Lord says, I'm telling you, listen to me. I clothe the grass. I clothe the field with grass, uh, which is just temporary. It's just there for, you know, a few months. It's just there in the spring. And by the time the summer comes, the heat drives it up. And I tell you, I clothe the field with the flower thereof. And he says, I clothe it in such a way that it ex far exceeds all the glory and all that which I gave to Solomon. So he says, here's Solomon. Look at all that I gave to him. Look at all the riches. Look at all the wealth. Look at all the blessing. Look at what happens when I'm there standing in your midst of a person who wants to walk with me, who's going to rely upon me for insight and wisdom, wants my understanding, wants my direction. Then he takes it to another level and says, I'm going to tell you about something that is even far greater in wealth and riches and beauty and splendor than that. Look at the fields that I clothed with grass and the flower. Look at all that I've done. This is Papa talking, and he's got very few people who can hear. It's a sad thing. Everybody has turned to their own way. Huh? He said, how much better am I going to take care of you that seek first the kingdom how much, what do you think I'm going to do for you? Who make my calls your calls, my purpose your purpose. Where you set the whole value system of your life on that which I have for you to do. Those things that I want to give you. Those things that are my purpose. You see Jesus, he's living for the purpose to come ransom you and me. He, he lived for the purpose to ransom every person like the woman who was a sinner who came and laid down at his feet weeping because of the presence of Jesus. There's so many people that want to encounter the presence of Jesus. How are they going to encounter the presence of Jesus unless there's somebody who's come to be trained by the Holy Ghost to live in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit? To be led by the Spirit. To be skilled in the movings of the presence of the Lord. That shows us the, the very clear contrast between being self-absorbed, doing our own thing, being caught up in all the stuff uh, that we need to do. All of our responsibilities. All of our commitments to men. You just understand, dear people. You just understand, parents. You, parents, you better watch 
who you allow to be influential in your children's lives. Uh, people, you better watch who you allow to be influential in your life. You better watch. You better watch out. Because the reality of it is, every human being has an influence on other human beings. And Father is going to hold every person responsible for that influence. Everyone. Solomon, at least, was aware of it. <laughs> of course, when you're set in a, in a position at that scale, <laughs> you know, it causes you to be a little bit more conscious of your responsibility. But nonetheless, every one of us have a responsibility before men. God wants to manifest his glory and his presence. All people need to do is see Jesus. The only way people are going to see Jesus is where you and I come into a place where we're willing to be baptized in the one who reveals Jesus. That's the Holy Ghost. He's come to reveal Jesus. The only way we, you and I are going to be able to be a part of revealing those things of heaven, to minister out of heaven, to speak out of heaven, is where we'll let God, the Holy Ghost, so fill us up and overwhelm our souls. I, you know what? I, I go into third world countries. I, you know, I love it. Because I don't, even have to, I don't even have to hardly preach. I mean, if I sneeze, the power of God slams the place. And in America, in, I have to work so hard. I have to lift up my voice like a trumpet. Huh? I've got to lift up my voice like people are dying, can't hear. Uh, and still, just get a little blip. A little, little shake, a little tremble. Mm -hmm. One great man of God said, be careful. That in handling the holy things, you have not carterized your hands and your heart and made them, through that touching of the fire, unable to feel anymore. Uh oh. Uh oh. The wrong handling and the wrong use of the anointing. Dear people, God's calling you to see. You <laughs> You have to, you're going to have to make some decisions. You're going to have to try, decide to rearrange your life, change things about your life. That's what we're working on. That's why I was standing here just ministering by the Spirit 37 days ago. And said, Lord, what, what, how can I help people begin to quantify, to quantitate in their life, their interaction with you? To really begin to be held <clears throat> accountable and responsible for their interaction with you. And that's when the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. <clears throat> about having you come join with us in reading the Bible in 90 days. We didn't ask you to read the Word of God with us in 30 days. It can be done. Not too, it's not that difficult. It just takes you three hours of study of day. That's a big deal. Hour in the morning, hour in the noon hour in the evening I mean you should be doing that anyways but you know I'm going to leave people alone just to get people to go 30 more minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening or however it is you break it up to so that you can begin to quantitate really how much room how much place you give to interacting with God where he can train you see the word of God is living and is powerful it is the most it is the most powerful effective force that exists on the earth is spirit in its life you sit there and you read it i mean there's things when i get anytime <clears throat> i get to prophecy what i do i love to just read it out loud you know when you get to the prophets jeremiah when you get the psalms you know <clears throat> and there's different places where you know the spirit of the lord is prophesying through someone Just read it out loud. The Word of God, the life-giving power of the Word of God. Train yourself in the Word of God. That you're shaped there. The Scripture says we've received the engrafted Word of God, which is able to save our soul. That's what James said. Peter said, we've been born of the incorruptible seed by the word of God. It's the word of God. We understand that the heavens were framed by the word of God. 
It is amazing. The power and the authority that rest in such a small, finite place. And everybody seems to just kind of spot check it every once in a while. You're not going to be skilled that way. Do that with your math book. Do that with the engineering. Do that with chemistry. <laughs> Do that with history. Do that with linguistics. Do that with whatever your occupation is. It ain't going to work out for you, dear people. It ain't, what do you, where's your heart? Where's your heart? I'm going to tell you right now, there has to come a consecration and a surrender in your spirit where you'll say, Father, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll be whatever you want me to be because it's a dynamic of trusting him more than anything else. People say, well, it's consecration, it's surrender. Yeah, but bigger than that, it is fundamentally you, the act of you and I saying, Father, you have rule and reign over my life. I'm going after the kingdom first. I want to be involved with what's going on forever. People just want to live their own life, die and go to heaven. You won't like heaven. It would be a miserable place to you. It won't be any place for you to do what you've been doing. Huh? People that love this world wouldn't like heaven. They wouldn't be there. And the thousand-year reign of Christ proves that. They don't want to be in heaven. They went into some place where that they can go and live rebelliously and riotously and persecute other people and, and abuse other human beings. The abuse level that is within the heart of men towards men is crazy. It's nuts. The bias, the prejudice that all men have against each other has nothing to do with skin color. Huh? Has nothing to do with race. <laughs> I know Americans hate Americans as much as I hate somebody from the Middle East. I mean, it's just all one big hate. You know what I'm saying? Give me a break. The only thing that changed that is the heart. That is a condition of the heart. It's a state of the heart. Here's what God said after the flood. He said, I know that the heart of man and his imaginations are only wicked continually. That's what God says. That's true. You listen to me. There's only one cure for it and only one remedy for it. And that's to be made a new creation by the miracle of salvation where God gives you a new heart and new spirit. And then that just gets you set up now. All that you just started. That's the start. You're not, that's not the end place. That's the start place. And now you and I are supposed to give ourselves to being instructed and trained in the things of the, of the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to give ourselves to being instructed and trained and skilled. Signs, wonders, and miracles that are only a result of the manifest presence of Jesus in our life. That first and foremost has to be to our life. In our own interaction with him. Maybe no one else knows. No one, maybe no one else can tell. But you know where you're set apart to God. And I'm going to tell you right now, the way you interact with his word is a, is a demonstration of that. I told everybody in this place, you're going to be able to quantitate. Your submission to the authority in the church. You're going to be able to have a revelation of really how much you're willing to do what God says to do. And I, I mean, I'm just so blessed to see so many people raise their hand. I wish that, were, you know, I wish that there wasn't so many people behind. But I praise for all, God for all the people that are ahead. How many is halfway done? About halfway done. How many is halfway? Come on. Anybody else halfway done? A few people halfway done? Anybody three quarters done? You're three quarters done. Uh oh. Aunt Leslie's a pace setter over here. She's three quarters done. Where are you at? Just tell me where you're at. I'll tell you where you're at. You're in Isaiah? You're doing well. This is supposed to be a lifestyle. Some of you, you've just been walking with it. How many people in here, you've just been walking with the Lord just over the past three months? Raise your hand. A couple of folks, six months, under three months. Three months, just been walking with the Lord three months. You're blessed in your first three months of, of your life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You'll read through the Bible. There's people who've been sitting around for 10, 15 years, never read through the Bible. 
That's, that's crazy, isn't it? Somebody said, well, listen, you need to write. Pastor Mark, you need to understand. You need to really prepare those messages really well. Make them pointed. And, and make them count, you know. Get a pile driver out and make your point. Because it's the only word of God that most people are going to get. I said, no, I'm not going to participate with that. I'm going to be a father in the house. I'm going to tell people, get to the work. Huh? Hallelujah. And get into, get into the work. Why diddle-dally around with the program? Come around here and say, you tried Jesus and it didn't work. You didn't try nothing. The Lord just was, you just came into a position where you could hear him call you to surrender your life. God, God demands sanctification. God has sanctified us <laughs> through this wonderful work of divine grace by the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the work of the Holy Spirit. He sanctified us. That means he made us holy and set us apart to live a certain way. Somebody said, can you help me understand this, the doctrine of sanctification? Yeah, I'll help you. You ready? It's to give yourself over to the Holy Ghost who will train you to live the life of Jesus. It's to be consecrated to living the life of Jesus by the Holy Ghost. You can say it either way. To be consecrated to living the life of Jesus. When you're living the life of Jesus, what happens? The atmosphere of heaven is revealed wherever you're at. That's what happened with Jesus. Now, does everybody like it? A lot of people wanted to kill him. They tried to take him and kill him. Religious people just, I mean, he just, he brought the worst. I have a friend of mine who's ministering one night, and when he was ministering, it was, just, it was a jam-packed place, and there was like five rows of preachers. And um, <clears throat> there's probably, I don't know, five, 6,000 people in the place. And he's just walking around, walking around in the anointing, ministering by the anointing. And one preacher literally became so enraged, he started trying to bite him like a dog. No, it's just a manifestation of a demon spirit in one of the preachers. It got captured on film, actually. It's very interesting. I like to sit and rewind that and watch that go. <laughs> so that's really what we're up against. Huh? No, I'm not kidding. He came up out of his chair with his mouth, trying to bite him. Trying to call us a preacher. Hmm? People, listen, don't, don't mess around with the holy things of God. Don't mess around with the holy things of God. Don't mess around with the holy things of God. These things are sacred. These, these things belong to everything that Father himself is and, and that he has freely given. He's made the church the fullness of him. And even though we haven't really stepped into it and and begin to cooperate with all that Father has available to us. That doesn't change anything. It's still available. The, the fullness of the Spirit is here right now. It's available right now. The changes have got to be made in our lives. A holiness, a reverence, a holy fear, an awe, a revelation, an insight, an awareness, a consciousness that only comes as a result of an encounter with God. And those encounters with God are available for you if you'll seek Him. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Isaiah was the prophet of God, anointed of God, a man, a part of the priesthood, whose daddy was a priest and grandfather and great-grandfather. And God had anointed him to be his mouthpiece. But when he stood before the presence of the Lord, as he did in Isaiah chapter 6, suddenly he was an unclean lips dwelling in the midst of an unclean people. Because that greater encounter brought a greater revelation of not only his shortcomings and his failings and the things that he needed to do differently, because, but it brought to him an awesome awareness of who the person of God was and what it meant to interact with him and what it meant to live for him and what it was to be in his presence. As he watched the seraphim fly with two wings and covered his face and two wings and covered his feet and two wings he did fly. That's how they minister before the presence of the Lord. They understand there. Jesus. Lord Jesus. You, we have a responsibility. We're going to have to step in that responsibility. 
the first thing that you have to do is you have to be born of the Spirit with an evidence that you've been born of the Spirit. Because until you're born of the Spirit, you can't understand any of these spiritual things. They're meaningless to you. They're foolishness to you. They're doesn't have any relevance. What on earth is he talking about now? That's crazy stuff, man. But having been born of the Spirit, now being willing, obedient, and committed to the Holy Ghost, and giving yourself to spiritual things, there we're strengthened and we're built up. And there is a commitment, there is a commitment and a consecration all the way through this walk where God says to us, he says, look what I've got for you. You could be looking at Solomon going, wow, what a blessing. What a place to step into with God. But he said, that is nothing. Look, I'm telling you, Solomon, all of his glory wasn't arrayed like these, like the fields are. It wasn't taken care of like all that you can see laid out here in the landscape before you. But I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to give you even more. I'm going to give you, all, I will give you all things. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. So everything that he named, in other words. It wasn't just talking about your provision for clothes. It wasn't just talking about your provision for food. He's talking about the things that belong to the realms of the Holy Ghost. The things that belong to that which is forever. Which is the things that belong to life. When I talk about the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about the things that are eternal. I'm talking about the things that belong to the Father. Nobody can know anything or have anything or in any way interact with God but by the Holy Ghost. He's the one who's come to reveal Jesus and make him known. He's the one here right now on the earth drawing men to Jesus. He's the convicting spirit, the reproving spirit, convincing men, convicting men, reproving men, drawing men. Hallelujah. He's the one who's come to teach us and lead us and guide us and help us and strengthen us. But what if, what if you just make it a practice of religion? Oh, well, you, you get into, you, you worship the Lord when you come to the meeting. And you're not really a part of what goes on in the meeting. I watch this happen over and again. You know, we can, we can launch great musicians out of this place with great anointings, but you're going to have to take the tapes home with you and learn the music. And if you don't learn the music, all you're doing is doing your own thing. You're not a part of the thing in the church. You're just doing your own thing. You need to get yourself, you need to go get yourself a censor and stand before the Lord and see how he takes care of you. You know what I'm saying? Because you're just off doing your own thing. And then you want to be justified in your rebellious state. God ain't going to justify you. Because that's really the whole dynamics of what's going on in the midst of the church today. Everybody just wants to do their own thing. And when, we, when we're talking about revival, everybody who's a revivalist is just bringing people to a place that says, no, I'm not going to do my own thing anymore. I want to be a part of a God thing. I want to I become a servant in the house of the Lord. I want to serve God with my life. I want to serve God with all that he's giving me. I mean, I, I, it's, it's a blessing that the Lord has given us the ability to walk around and, and, and to, to see and to hear and to have the equipment to fully function as a fully functional human being. And we can spend that on ourselves. We can take our help and spend it on our own life. We can take the, 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 the gifts that the Lord has given us just from a natural point of view. For example, people who have very good memories, people who are very good at studying, my goodness, the advancements that can be made in your life as you begin to give yourself to the Word of God and the things of the Spirit of God, the retention of knowledge that is there. What a blessing it is to the church if you can learn many different languages. What a blessing to the church it is if you can carry a tune. Some people were born without the ability to carry a tune. I mean, I love little Anna. You just do a little tune, just I'm a little tune, and she's got it. She's got it. I, I think she has perfect pitch. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see a Holy Ghost co woman come out. I, I, I'm known of people, many of people during meetings, they, didn't, they, they, they had some basic talent, but they never had given themselves uh, to, to the Lord or to the ministry of the Spirit and the ministry of the things of the kingdom of God. And the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they began to play the piano. Just be, started off just, just with, with two you know, two fingers playing the piano in the meeting. And then it went to two fingers, four fingers now. And then it, it, it spread out. And then the power of God began to move through their life. And they became great psalmists in the church. And they were given to it. Huh? Where they were just always there before the Lord singing 
worshiping, being a part of that which is going on in the kingdom of God. I mean, what happens when you begin to become a minister? Some people have got the, a, a special call upon their life and, and compassion and mercy moving through their life where they begin uh, to pray for people and intercede for people. And they don't just do it every once in a while. They've basically fully given themselves over to ministering to the, the things of the Spirit in, in the church. There is a, it's a word. They're washing a saint's feet. They're taking care of the things that belong to the Father. Father's interests are their interests. Everybody else just run around saying they're doing it, saying they're doing it, but there's no evidence that they're doing it. You hear what I'm saying? I praise God for the people who cleaned the building. I praise God for the people who labor to get the bathrooms clean. It's tough. It's a difficult situation on Sunday morning to walk into a stinky bathroom. Huh? Kind of just... You know, messes the whole thing up. <laughs> Praise the Lord for people who go. That's a, that's, a, that's a job. That's a labor of love. And to do it as unto the Lord. And to do it faithfully. But I pray in Jesus' name that won't just, everybody won't just let one or two people do it all the time. That everybody else can, you know, find a time and place to throw in. How is it that you serve in the kingdom of God? How is it you minister? How is it that you wash the saints' feet? How is it that you give your life to seeking first the kingdom of God? For the kingdom of God is fundamentally revealed in the church today. It's not in the nation Israel. The Lord said, I'm taking my kingdom from you. And I'm going to give it to another nation that will bring forth the fruits thereof. In other words, he calls us a holy nation. That's what he calls the church. A holy nation. As one man of God said, we ought to have our own currency. And if we, was really to, if we were really to step into the authority that God has given us, he's given us the ability. He's given us to make disciples out of nations. So the nation is telling us what to do. America was once a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's how it all was formed. It's what my ancestors did when they came here. The Shakers and the Quakers and the... Ha, ha, hallelujah. The preachers of the gospel that hit this shore that says, listen, we're going to touch heaven here. We're not going to have people telling us that we can't speak in tongues and be under, under, under peril of death for the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. Under peril of death for the manifestation of the Holy Ghost less, really, 400 years ago, even 300 years ago. Under peril of death. I'm not exaggerating. That's why one of my ancestors, the first American martyr, she's in the Fox's Book of Martyr. They took her in the hunger in the Boston House of Commons. She laid hands on the sick and shook under the power of God. She was Quaker. Huh? Under peril of death. Because, you know, the Boston House of Commons was ruled by religious people. Praise God for the separation of church and state. I want to separate it and the state subject to the church. Amen. In that sense, when the church is right, when the church is wrong, it doesn't need to be subject. Huh? Because we don't want the reign of religion. We want the reign of God. Huh? The reign of God, the reign of his love and his compassion and his mercy is going to take care of everybody. Huh? Huh? There's going to be health care for everybody. Huh? Amen. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to be like, Sitara Masangalea, be healed right now. That's what my aunt, that's what my great, great, great aunt was doing. She'd go pray. She had a special uh, ministry praying for babies that were sick. She had had a baby that was, that was uh, sub- born and, and, uh, and died. And, and uh, she, God gave her great compassion for babies and gave her anointing, lay hands on, this, on babies that were sick, and they would recover. Huh? I mean, Look, the, the kingdom of God takes care of the poor. Huh? The church is supposed to be taking care of the poor and the afflicted and the orphans. You know, I, it's, the things are all messed up. You, you can't figure out what's going on out there in the governments of this world. Just, just in, bottom line of it is, it just you can, you can write this down. It's somebody's scheme to make some money. It's usually what's going on. That's what men do. Well, what are we doing? Where are we being trained? Because if you don't begin, listen, dear brother, dear sister, listen to me. If you don't begin to serve God, if you don't begin to make him first, if you don't begin to take upon yourself the responsibility and the burden of ministry, 
Solomon stepped into the responsibility and the burden of ministry when he was given that position as king in the kingdom. Look, the Lord has made us priests and kings. And, and furthermore, he's made us his representatives. You, I mean, you know one of the terrible things to do is to bear false witness. To bear false witness. Say, oh yeah, I'm right with God. I'm a testimony of what it looks like to be right with God. And you're bearing false witness because you're not living the life. You know, I, mean, I, I think, listen, I'll just tell you this right now. Think about this. What does it cost the church if you leave? How much are we going to miss? Huh? I mean, truly. In terms of the flow and what you bring into the ministry and what you bring in terms of the service to the king, what are we going to miss when you go? You have to think about these things. You need to have, you need to have measurable, quantitative, evidence in your life because it's there and until somebody starts pointing these things out you can just leave them out there in the you know well we're not going to think about that right now hey we came to the meeting well look you know what that's something praise god you came to the meeting did you mess the meeting up because of your attitude did you just mess it up where you're like a wet blanket at the party huh were you a boat anchor when we're trying to set sail Huh? Like, let's think about it. You came to the meeting. Bless your heart. You gave in the offering. How much? What did it cost you? No, I'm just, you know, you you got you to deal with these things, dear people, because God's got a bigger picture of you than you have for you. God's picture of you is that all his glory be made manifest in your life. My goodness. It would be something that the Lord said, well, you know what? You, you know, I'll let her, I'll let her, Sit in the chair. And, and I'll let him, well, he can sing maybe if he behaves, right? And I, I'll, let, I'll let her wash dishes. And I, I'll let him sweep the floors. And I, I, I'll let the other one, no, I'll let the other one have a little shake. And I'll let this other one over here have a little glow. And maybe a couple of people, I'm going to give them a little bit of joy. The Lord gives to us his, everything he has. Everything he has. But if we're going to have it, it's got to be everything we want. It's got to be everything we want. Because I'm telling you right now, he gives us for free, but it's not cheap. He's willing to share with every man, but he's not going to have it. He's not going to have it profaned. He's not going to have it walked all over. Oh, Lord, we, we just couldn't make it to the meeting. You couldn't make it to the meeting. I invited you to come. I invited you. To the, I invited you. <laughs> I was at it. I went to go with a friend and... And uh, he was having this very uh, important, prestigious meeting with a bunch of government officials in Washington, D.C. And I was out with my wife. I was expecting him to call me and let me know. I didn't know where to go. I told him I was coming. I didn't know where to go. And then 30 minutes before it's time, he's calling me saying, you got to get here now. i got to get here now, my dear friend. I appreciate that you invited me to the meeting, and I'm blessed that you want me to be there so desperately. Then he called me up. You get here now. I need you here now. Listen, it's going to take me an hour and a half to get there. I've been invited to the meeting, but I wasn't prepared to go. I was wanted, I was wanted but I wasn't prepared to go. I was waiting for an additional invitation. I didn't make it as important to myself as it should have been where I found out all the information up front. I was busy doing my own thing. This is, a, this is just the way we live, doing our own thing. We show up whenever it's convenient. Oh, wait, you know what? You're going to be blessed if I give you some of my talent or whatever. You know, Josh was telling me, he just says, you know, I really was reluctant to get involved in music ministries because I was involved in a music ministry. And what we did is we all had to go back into the green room as soon as the music was over. And we all sat back there and hung out. And then when all the church services over and they're ready for the next meeting, and we all the music musicians came out and there was this big gulf between the people and the musicians. I mean, what a circus. What a circus. Things get so distorted. They're so off. They're so not even right. How is it that we turn this thing back around and begin to get right? The only way to turn it back around and begin to get right is when we just fundamentally 
just respond to this so great of invitation, this so awesome opportunity, and we begin to value it to where that we, we put our hearts into it. We want, what do I got to do now? I'm not just sitting waiting for you to call me up, text me. Huh? Well, you know what? The man of God had many things to do. He had many things on his list rather than to be my personal assistant that day. Are you listening to me? Father's got many more things to do rather than just being our personal assistant. You know, and having a special, you know, thunderstorm with lightning bolts to get you out of bed, to remind you, after all, you're supposed to go and participate in, in my church. You're supposed to seek first the kingdom of God. You're supposed to give yourself to the realms of being trained by the Holy Ghost because the more you'll sit in the presence of the Lord, the more you'll participate with the presence of the Lord, the stronger the anointing will become. That will become measurable, measurably strong. I was so blessed when Ruthie Anna took a hold of the microphone the other night and began to speak by revelation things I've never heard any preacher preach. How does that happen? Because she participates. You know what? Anybody's going to walk in the anointing, just, just mark it down. Anybody who's got the call of God upon their life and they're going to walk in the anointing, everybody's going to find a problem with them because the prince and the power of the air creates the problem. And when you haven't, I haven't understood how to distinguish between the prince and the power of the air and the, and the spirit of God, you know what? You're just back and forth, driven by the wind, you know, and tossed. Are you listening to me? We need to be trained. We need to be trained and recognize what needs to be shut out and not allowed because it will influence our decision makings. It will influence the way we feel. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I love to tell the story. I tell it over and again, but it was so profound to me. It wasn't the first time it happened to me, but it was most, one of the most dramatic times that it happened with me. I was in another country, and I had a bunch of ministers helping me in a, in a mass evangelism crusade, and this one pastor, he was translating for me, and I would say something, I would say a very short sentence, and it'd take him like three paragraphs to get finished. And I finally turned to him, I said, listen, you translate word for word. It should not take you that long to translate, I'll turn my microphone off, to translate what I just said. And so I really, I like had a bit of a problem with this guy. He's thinking, what are you doing, man? If you're going to preach, why did I come? I don't even need to be here. You do it. Or just let me do what God sent me to do that you embraced me to come to do, okay? And so we got that settled. So I had a little bit of a problem with this guy, right? And I just had this problem with this guy. I got a problem with this guy. And so we're at the pastor's conference. Now, because we did pastor's conference today, we do larger meetings at night. And, um, and I'm telling you, the place is jam-packed full. On. There's, it's a place held more than 3,000 people. It was jam-packed. Uh, the, the, only, the only place that wasn't really jam-packed was this one section where this preacher was sitting. And, uh, and my eyes just kept, I couldn't get my eyes off of my tractor beam. And I'm standing there trying to minister what it is I'm ministering. And then right here in my head, I'm thinking, I don't like this guy. Because, you know, and then right out of my spirit, I begin to prophesy concerning what God would do with his life concerning the greatness that God uh, was bringing him to, the great things that God had done through his life, the place through his life, things I didn't know anything about, how influential he had been in shaking um, the nation that he was in and the nation that he bordered on. By the time the, the Holy Ghost got finished prophesying through me, I mean, I'm like, wait a minute, man. I got to understand how to quit being influenced by my own perception. I've got, to, I've got to understand on another level, and this is always happening. We think we got it, and the Lord says, okay, let me show you how you don't got it. Now, come here. Now, yeah, you got it, and I'm just so blessed that you prophesying now. But you understand, listen to me. The Spirit of the Lord was poured upon all flesh so that you quit saying your own stuff, having your own attitudes, huh? living in your own ideas and consciousness, and rather begin to have the Spirit of the Lord poured out upon you and prophesying where the sweet melodies of heaven coming out of your mouth, the oratory of the Holy Ghost coming forth from your spirit. Come on now. Do you know how few people do this? Do you know how few people do this? I mean, I, I've been amazed because 
you know, the reality of it is, is there's many times I am conscious when just on everyday life, just interacting on everyday life. I'm speaking by the Spirit. I know I'm speaking by the Spirit. And I'm speaking by the Spirit. And then people just act like I'm just talking. Because I'm just expressing the idea. I don't say, hey, listen, I'm telling you, speaking by the Spirit. Because I don't, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to pull that card. But, if you guys, but it's really, really, to me, it's, it's just a revelation of, wow, man, people just don't even, they, they don't even get it. You know, you're sitting talking to people, and they're interacting with you like you're purely human, like it's your opinion up against their opinion. You don't, have, you don't really care for them, or you, you don't have any compassion, or you're not, you know, being sensitive to their need. And there you are speaking by the Holy Ghost. Huh? They have no, no ability to hear the Spirit. No ability to hear the Spirit. You're going to have to be, you're going to have to be willing to come over here and get trained. And to get trained, you've got, you got to sign a commitment letter. Huh? You don't have to send an application with a bunch of proofs and, and letters of recommendation. You get in, you get in, you get, you get brought into the school of the kingdom of God. The most prestigious school that exists. Anybody who wants to come in. Huh? Open admission. Open enrollment. For whosoever will. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's God. The change has got to come. And it's a great cost to you and me. And don't think it's not a great cost to you and me. Because we're going to have to say, we're going to have to deny ourselves. We're going to have to quit trusting in ourselves. We're going to have to quit going after our own things and doing our own things. And, and, and you know, Tending to our own needs and our own issues and being upset when what the stuff that we want, you know, doesn't doesn't take place. If you begin to be trained by the Holy Ghost, you won't yell, you won't be yelling anymore at your spouse or at your children. As my wife writes in her book, a yells from hell, so shout to the Lord. Amen. You start shouting to the Lord, you won't be yelling. You won't have to be dealing with some schizo woman in your house. You listen to me. And, you know, just take that patiently because I understand the whole dynamics of what goes down with hormones. You don't have to come under that stuff. Are you listening to me? This is constant swing of emotions. Listen, that's nothing, that's nothing but hell. That's nothing but demonic. That's nothing but a religious lie. Are you listening to me? Who wants to live in that? You children will be moving out quickly. You don't want that. Come on. You know, I read, I read where Miss Wesley, she had 19 children. Bless her darn heart. People tell me they got two children and they don't have time to make it to the meeting. You just understand how much I'm having to deal with. I got two kids. I said, well, my wife had four. She came just fine. Well, she had help. My husband, he's, he doesn't help me at all. Well, I didn't help her either, really. She was helping me. I was preaching. I wasn't sitting there. I was preaching. I was ministering. She's gathering everything up, including the kitchen sink, and stiff it, stuck it, st st sticking it in the little small car that we had. It was piled. I could barely see out the windows. You know, you got three kids in diapers and a baby that you're carrying around kind of thing. We decided to do it all at once, get it done with, and move on to the next phase. It's all planned out. It was a little bit challenging. Dear Miss Wesley had 19 kids. She wanted to have raise up evangelists. One day she came out in, 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 in the story that it was reading. I believe Charles was writing it. Charles Wesley was relating the story. And his mom was a little bit grumpy. And then she turned and she repented to the boys. And she said, listen, forgive mom. I didn't spend time in the presence of the master before I come out here. I'm sorry. Wow, what a lesson. Where people can begin to recognize their own, walking in their own demeanor, their own spirit. Huh? Walking in their own self-interest and their own attitudes that are imposed upon them by the cares of this life, by the realms of this world, by the things that demon spirits impose versus just living over here in the realms of the Holy Ghost. Listen, it's a participation. It takes an effort. It takes a consecration. It's not something that's done outside of your will. It's a willful, conscious commitment to do this. And it's glorious. The Father needs to be people to participate. Father, 
Father has Father purchased an army. He purchased an army. He purchased an army to go everywhere, executing his will, to blow the trumpet in Zion, to rush on the city, to climb up the walls, to go in and spoil the houses, to bind the strong men, and to take, and to take as it were, almost by force those that have been in prison by the powers of darkness. To have authority over the prince and the power of the air. To bind the, the mind-blinding spirits. To cast out demon spirits. Which is only possible if you and I are trained to move in the authority of the Holy Ghost. If we're not careful, we'll give place to things in our spirit and emotion and our attitude that will work counter. It will be counterproductive. It will harden you. Against these things. It will keep you that much. It will drive you that much further away. Make you that much more dull in your senses. It's, you know. It's actually tending to the very opposite. Making you further from being a student of the things of the Spirit. Rather than drawing you deeper into this relationship. Where you can fully yield your members as weapons of righteousness unto God. To ultimately walk in such authority, you're going to have to deal with the fact that when Satan comes with his temptation, that for you to give into it is going to have an impact on the authority that you have in the realms of the Spirit. Because now, of whatever a man is overcome by, the same as he brought in subjection to. I don't want to be, I don't want to think for a moment that I'm subject to the whims and will and wishes of Satan. For him to plague my body with his sickness and disease. Huh? For him to torment my mind with his lies. And with his evil and wicked imaginations. How many people live under the, the framework and their inspiration is imaginations? Live under the influence of fear. Always concerned. Somebody's going to get them. Somebody's trying to take advantage of me. I've got to watch myself. Still got my wallet in my back pocket. Anyway, you know, just constantly living under fear. Of various different times. And just that somebody's going to steal something from you. Somebody's trying to get, a, get something over on you. Someone's going to turn somebody against you. Constant imaginations. People don't love me. They're just faking Everybody hates me. Paranoid. Such things should never exist in the house of God. Such things should never exist among the people who've been washed in the blood of the Lamb and have been born of the Spirit and been filled with the Holy Ghost. But the only way that that is ever going to stop is that you're going to come and you're going to begin to participate, sit in the presence of the Lord and begin to participate with the kingdom of God and say goodbye to this world because so many people are standing between two opinions. They don't want to let go. They're still holding on, trusting in themselves. They don't want to fully let go and walk out under that, under that sea of trust, as it were, out under the waters of trusting God. With total abandonment to say, from this day forward, I take no thought for my life. I... If we're going to see the church break through into a realm where business and vocation really truly serves the ministry, that is a cultural shift. That is a change of culture. What people do is they, they go into debt for a house. They go into debt for cars. They go into debt for Christmas presents. They go into debt for clothing. They go into debt for, I mean, whatever else. All the things for life. And now they are so under debt and so under the burden of the debt that they carry the responsibility for that debt. And now they live as a slave to their job. And now their whole value system is what their boss thinks about them and how it's going down with promotions and raises and whatever else. And that's then how they begin to measure God's love for them. And the whole thing is just totally messed up and distorted. Meanwhile, the church lays waste. Waste. Broken down. Broken down. Made into shambles. Doesn't look like the glory. And didn't it make didn't it break your heart when the Assyrians came and started taking all the gold? 
and the precious things and the Babylonians came in there and smashed up all the beautiful things that Solomon was able to construct under the blessing of God and carried away the brass and got even all those gold nails out and just totally thrashed it. To ultimately break down the walls of it, the city and burn the, burn the house of God. It's all the beautiful wood, just all a vague memory. Such is the house of the Lord. Why? Because people like you are still halting between two opinions. Whether they're going to be slaves to society and to their own self to pursue their own interest. Huh? I'm going to tell you right now. Father, take better care of you than you've ever taken care of yourself. I mean, God's not a liar. He said... I'll give all these things to you. But there's got to be a cultural shift. There's got to be a transition. People are going to have to move out in faith and say, okay, I'm going to step into a realm where business serves the ministry, where my whole business is about ministry. And, and, and when, when there is wealth and when there is increase, it really truly does go right into ministry. Are you listening to me? Come on now. <laughs> you can't even do that unless you've got a sole proprietorship as it were, and that sole proprietorship needs to be fully in the hands of, of the Lord because you got, and then people go and start getting crazy ideas and take out loans and have shareholders, and now they're just in debt in another way. Okay, come on now, people. I'm talking to you now. I'm just trying my best to move you out the rut you in. Huh? I'm going to tell you right now, you will not begin to move and function and flow in the realms of the Holy Ghost until you participate more with them. Whatever level you're participating with God in, you want to go ahead and you want to see that increased. Otherwise, you're not going to have an increase in the anointing. And I, and I wanted to pare it down for you. I didn't realize I was going to be this long with it. But I want to pare it down for you because it really does. It is, yeah, reading the Bible can be religious, but reading the Bible can be relational. <laughs> reading the Bible is supposed to be a relationship thing, not a religious thing. A relationship thing, something's happening, man. Something's going on. Change is taking place. It is now moving into the dimensions of the Spirit. There is a, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now you're actually interacting in a faith realm. You know, I'm sitting down. I'm listening to the same Father word that Father would speak if he was speaking audibly right now. I'm listening to that which is transforming power of God. The word of God working mightily in me. <laughs> Understanding that it is, it is this sincere desire for the word that causes us to mature. You hear me? Sincere desire. <laughs> Lurama, growing, maturing. Ambalasateyahora. I try to tell people, I've tried to tell people for over 30 years that prayer isn't just a requirement, it's a necessity. Because when I give myself to prayer, what happens in this place of prayer, the Lord shows me things that Satan would try to do in areas of bringing sickness into my house or, or, or trying to create a snare in my, my family or around me. Or in the church. And I go after that thing, man. That if I wasn't in prayer, I would not get to participate it in what God would do to stop what Satan has purposed to do. See, God has given us spiritual weaponry. He's given us God power. You know that your imaginations actually have power to run counter to the will of the Father around you? That's why, it is, that's why God has given you weaponry. He's, in, he's, he's given you God power. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. God power to bring down imaginations. Because why? It's a battlefront. It's going to stop you from being effective in the things that Father has purposed to express through your life and develop you in with the mind of the Spirit. Having now received and, and, being, and being willing to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Literally put on the mantle of God like Elisha took the mantle of Elijah. I mean, come on, people. This, you're going to have to understand this is more than a holler and a shout. This is, this is a commitment and a consecration to, of your life that God is calling you to do that is measurable. Somebody said, you don't have a right to judge me. I'm a judge. I do have a right. Ask Father about that. Go read your Bible. I have the right to point out and say, you can't do that. I have the right to say, you, you're moving forward. You're not. 
But I also have the blessing to preach the good news to you and say there's an opportunity. Well, you say, what do you want to do? Most people want to do something they can't do. When Ruthiana was like, you know, she's six years old, she wanted to drive the tractor. I said, baby, your legs aren't long enough to reach the brake. I wasn't worried about the gas pedal. I said, when you, she would, can't you rig it up? Can't you put blocks on my feet or something? No, we're not rigging it up, baby. You're ready to drive it when your legs are long enough. The other day we were out at the ranch. I got her in the tractor. I said, you're driving. Well, we always want to do things that we're too young to do. So then the man of God, the people of God, who sat in the house of the Lord to administrate the things of the Spirit, says, you can start doing this. And then you feel like, well, I'm not getting to do what I want to do. Well, I'll tell you right now, if you do this, you'll get to do what you want to do because God is going to give you the desires of your heart. No good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. If you're faithful in a few things, he'll make you a ruler over many. Huh? The Lord wants to train you. There's been many times, there's been many times in the Spirit, the Lord gave me to said spit, make mud, stick it in their eye. And I said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. And they went right, they wanted to get the mud off. Now, this is nonsense, man. Why don't you spit in my eye? I can't believe they spit on me. So to speak. You know what, you know. Nothing's changed. The guy with the, the guy is blind. Who's just handling me, man? What's going on? What did he just, what did he just put in my eye? What are we, what are we doing now? Don't wipe it off. You go to the pool of Siloam, wipe it off. Oh, God, change the hearts of God. Father, cause people to realize where they're influenced by a rebellious spirit in a rebellious age. I mean, can you think about it. People are raised in the homes, rebellious homes. You know, it wasn't until I got older. I didn't realize. I mean, I heard all the men of God say about how that the people and the musicians, how, you know, in the 60s and the 70s, how it was fully demonic and, you know, how that, you know, the peace sign and all these other things that were going on that were so popular were just part of, of satanic uh, symbols and worship and all this stuff. And, you know, just, I'm like, why? Did that didn't make any sense to me, you know? And, uh, but as I got older and I stepped into a realm of discerning the Spirit, I could look at Janis Joplin and see that she was a witch. I could look at these different people that everybody was fascinated with and could see the satanic influence in life. And many people have been raised under that satanic influence. They still like the music. It's like no discernment whatsoever, man. <laughs> that is birth right out of hell. I mean, it, it was, everybody just thought it was like urban folklore that they sold their soul to the devil, man. Ultimately, I came into a gifting of discerning of spirits that I looked at. I could see the manifestation of what the old men of God, the old Pentecostal men of God, that people were just saying, oh, man, you're weird. You're just like, come on, come on. You know, get out of your country, Hicks music, and recognize that this is just the changing times. And they're saying, no, 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 no. The, there is a demonic rule here. There is a satanic power at work. It is a wave and a move of rebellion. This is steeped in the very occult of witchcraft. These people are warlocks. This is demon power. And it's just like you go shrug your shoulders because you couldn't even relate, you know. You're too young to relate. You don't know any better. You don't know. And then ultimately, you step into a realm of God, and all of a sudden, it's totally visible to you. And then you begin to reckon with the fact of how people in this culture and society are so under the influence, baptized in this realm of the demonic. And then you're, tr and, 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 you know, and they all, everybody loves Jesus. I'll take it. Praise God. We all love Jesus. It's true. Everybody, everybody says, oh, I love Jesus. Oh, I pray all the time. Oh, and he's always been with me. Nonsense. I just come right out with it these days. I'm like, I used to be really radical with it. I just say, no, you, you all messed up. You, you're talking about a different God than I'm talking about. Let me tell you about my God. Because it's all confused. It's all distorted. There's going to have to be a move of God. There's going to have to be a revival that this makes a distinction. There's going to have to be, once again, the fresh 
fires of Pentecost, the fresh rushing mighty wind. That ain't going to happen just because people show up to the meeting. It's going to happen because there is a consecration to the kingdom of God, to doing the will of God, to having the things of heaven manifested in this earth, to having the very presence of Jesus Christ communicated through our lives. That is an act of consecration that demands everything about our lives. Not just a little part. And Father, so merciful and so patient that he just keeps working with us. And whatever little bit we, we give him, he'll take it and he'll work with it. And he'll love us. But it doesn't mean that we're going to have revival. It doesn't mean that there's going to be a great move of God. It doesn't mean there's going to be anything barely above a manifestation of any other religion. So then all of a sudden, somewhere, sometime, zeal's going to have to kick in. Passion's got to kick in. Huh? Determination's got to p- kick in. A hunger, a thirsting, to hunger and thirst, to want God's kingdom now. Huh? To seek to want it now. That's to seek it first. To have it foremost in your mind, in your heart, in your purposes, and that what you desire, and that what you want. Could the disciples really get it? Not really. They did to some degree. They didn't really get it. They're just all stunned. You know how I know they didn't get it? Because after the resurrection, okay, Jesus is raised from the dead. Powerful, okay? They already know who he is. Now they really know who he is. And now they're just this, that much more stunned. This isn't working out like we thought. You, the Messiah, you died, you rose from the dead, and we're still right here, and... Not a whole lot has changed. And the Lord's saying, yeah, because you're going to go change it. And everybody's still stunned. We thought you were changing it. No, you're going to go change it. They're just stunned. And so you know what you do when you're stunned? You go fishing. And that's where Jesus found them. They were out fishing. This is after he's appeared to them. They're, they're fishing. Of course, you know, they're, they're doing drag nets and whatnot. But nonetheless, they're... And Jesus hollers out, Children, have you any meat? He's got a fire going on the shore. Jesus is amazing. He's so amazing how he comes. I would have come and tipped the boat over. I would have done something dramatic. You guys, you knuckleheads. I can't even believe it. I, I, come on. You, you know, after, you, why can't you get this? Children, have you any meat? No, none. Throw the net on the other side of the boat. Immediately, it's the master. He's the master. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Oh, God. Um, Peter jumps in, and I go, wait for the boat to get turned around. He goes swimming. <laughs> Jesus has already got fish on the fire. He's amazing. Serving us. And he looks at Peter and says, Peter, you love me? Peter says, yeah, I love you, Lord. And he's thinking about it to himself, yeah, what am I doing here? He's feeding my sheep. Says it again, you love me. He's basically saying, get, get busy now. I died that men might live. I rose from the dead that they may be born again. What are you doing here? He looks at him, he says, he's, he, he gives them a, a meeting place to meet him, and he ministers to about 500 brethren, got gathered together. 500. It wasn't not much of a mega church. Out of all, those who were healed. You could number in his family and his close friends almost that many people. The multitudes. Where are the 5,000 that ate the miracle loaves and fishes? Where are the thousands and the tens of thousands that came to the meetings? That's 5,000 men, not counting women and children. And they believed in big families in those days. That's what they did. The more children you had, the more help you had on the ranch and the farm. It made sense. Big families worked. Huh? It cost you more. It earned you more. Huh? 
There's a lot of folks. That would have been that would have been at least nearly fifteen, twenty thousand people on the low side. Where is everybody? He's got five hundred people there. And he right there, right there in front of him, he sins. He's talking to them, just like me standing here, and he begins to go up. And it's like right up to the ceiling, saying They didn't have a Holy Ghost meeting. They were just, they didn't have a Holy Ghost meeting. They weren't jumping around going, whoa, praise God, this is amazing. It wasn't happening. They were just, no question, shocked out of their mind. Did we just see this? Did this just happen? Were we dreaming? Were you actually there to wake up the next morning? Did that happen? Or did I dream that? Because he tells them, now go tarry in Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father. They're saying, is that, the, is that is, now is this when it's all going to make sense? Is this when you're going to restore the kingdom unto Israel? And we're going to be at the, we're going to be it, ruling over everybody else instead of everybody ruling over us? We're not going to be persecuted anymore? Is this it? He said, I'm, I'm not telling you that, about that. Just go wait. You're going to receive the promise of the Father. Remember what I told you. Remember what John told you. I bet he baptized with water. But you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Remember what John said about me. John said, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. He said, go wait. How many people made it? 120. The rest had different things going on. They love Jesus. They all love Jesus. They all been praying every day. And the Lord's been with them. <laughs> they got this thing. It's nonsense. As soon as I start hearing that, I'm just like, forget about it, man. <laughs> it's better for you to show your love by what you do. Huh? Show your faith by what you do. Huh? You tell me about your faith. Paul, James said, you tell me about your faith. I'm going to show you mine. Huh? You tell me about your love. I'm going to show you mine. You tell me about your commitment. I'm going to show you mine. Would the church survive if it depended upon you? Just think about it. Put it at that level. God wants that responsibility on your life. Otherwise, you're never going to have the reaction that Solomon had. He said, Father, this, I've got to have your do. I've got to have your anointing. I've got to have your power. And I've got to have your ability. Otherwise, I can't do this. Father says, because you asked me for my ability, for my wisdom, for my insight. You didn't ask me for riches and honor. You didn't ask me for a long life. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to give you my ability, and I'm going to give you riches and honor to go with it. It is a commitment. Dear, dear people, listen, I, I mean, for me, it's this. This is for me. This is what it is for me. Woe is me if I don't, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. I've tried to get out of this. If I quit preaching, you know what would happen to me if I said, I'm resigning? I would be just a bucket of tears. I would be sobbing. That's what I would be. A, a friend of mine uh, that has a wonderful mantle of the Spirit of the Lord. He said, I'm done. I'm done. I said, yeah, you're right. You're done. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm done. I'm, I'm finished. It's over. I'm done. Put a fork in me. <laughs> I'm done. I said, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to just tell you what's going to happen. You try to walk away from the ministry one week, and you and I both know what you're going to be. One sobbing bucket of tears crying out, oh God, the lost, oh God, your kingdom, oh God, your purposes. Because we've been, our hearts been arrested by the master. Huh? Huh? We've been taken prisoner. He led captivity captive. Huh? I was the prisoner of Satan. He came, rescued me. I was a captive prisoner of the enemy of my soul. And he came and led me as his, away as his prisoner. I'm the prisoner of the Lord Jesus now. And I'm happy to be uh, his prisoner. He's been liber he, he liberated me to come under his rule, not to live my own life. He liberated you to be ruled by him. Come on now. And I, I pray that that just sounds good to you because... He is God Almighty, and nothing, nothing can 
in any way prevent his will and purposes. There's no power greater than his power. Nothing's going to stop him. He will absolutely win. You secure with him. What a blessing to be in his house. What a blessing to be under his leadership. No forces in hell. No thing, nothing present or to come in this world, onto the world. No power that exists can ever stop what he wants to, to accomplish. And he set his affections on us. What is man, O oh God, that you mindful of him, the son of men that you visit him? He says, go wait, go tarry in Jerusalem till you've been endued with power from on high. 120 people show up. And really, the scripture says, literally, approximately. There's not an exact number. It literally says in the Greek language, every text, approximately 120. And the Lord Jesus didn't feel like a failure. That's who was sorted out. And he loves to save by few. And he, he's not, the Papa's not going to share his glory with nobody. Now, we've got to learn that if we're, we're trusting in ourselves and doing our own way, and we've got to cling to whatever it is we're, we're trying to hold on to, especially our own life, and we've got to take care of ourselves because we don't take care of ourselves, who's going to take care of us? That right there is a heart that is not right with God. It lives under the torment of fear. And the Lord says, I want, you to, oh, I want you to walk away from that. And then when they were waiting, they, were, they weren't, they were shut in. Shh. I guess it would be like being, in, being like being in an Islamic nation. All the windows are closed. It's 120 degrees. I was led into a Pentecostal church. And when I was led in, they opened up these security gates. The walls were like 10 foot high. They had rolls of barbed wire on top of it. I said, where are we going? This is the church. You're, you're kidding me. He said, we go through the gates. Pentecostal church, Pentecostal denomination. I had my dad with me. <laughs> and we go in the meeting. They got the doors closed, bolted, locked. All the windows are down. There's no air conditioning. It's the middle of the summertime in the desert in Egypt. My dad finally said, I'd rather go to prison than sit in this hot, <laughs> hot building. And because he was the oldest guy there, and of course the senior guy in the, in the, in, in the Middle East don't get messed with, he goes and opens up all the windows. And that was, bare, that was a little bit better. And the hygiene difference in the culture is shocking to begin with. That's, where the, that's basically what the disciples were doing those 10 days. It's us. It's you and me. doesn't matter that they've been with Jesus for three years. They've seen the miracle that took place at the resurrection. They see him ascend up out of their presence. They're still in trouble. We're going to enter. Shh. They're going to kill us too. Bless Thomas's heart. You know, I, I love the passage of Scripture where in John chapter 11 where Jesus is going to go raise Lazarus from the dead. And all, the, all that Thomas can get is he's going to Jerusalem. Well, let's go. Let's go die with him. <laughs> the fatalist mentality. I'm just going to die. So terrible. <laughs> Everything's so negative. It's we're all going to be it's death and destruction. But when the bottle sticky, the most of Palatana, Mikesha, Pocatana, Mea, Tia, Patora, Paya came. Say, without a Mosafea. They were there together, all in one place. Waiting, just doing what Jesus said. Go wait till you receive the promise. What's that? Oh, Jesus just gave him a little bit of clue. Well, you're going to get the river then. You're going to get the promise of the Father then. You don't get baptized. Well, what does that look like? He didn't say nothing. He's, are, we, are you going to restore the kingdom at this time? He didn't tell him, listen, this is what's going to happen to you. All of a sudden, you're going to begin to speak with other languages and other tongues. Out of coming out of your inner speak. He didn't tell him. 
See, just, all they knew is that they were going to get baptized in the Holy Ghost in fire. They were probably sitting there studying. They had the Strong's Exhausted Concordance out. <laughs> they were having a seminar, trying to be quiet, not sing too loud, so that the neighbors couldn't hear, and they'd get arrested and be crucified too. Jesus, help us. Nothing's changed. But when the power of God, the Holy Ghost, came upon them, everything changed. Everything at that moment changed. Before they couldn't understand the Scripture, he opened up their eyes to understand the Scripture concerning what would happen to him. Now, all of a sudden, so all of a sudden, Peter staggers out into the street. They all stagger in the street. They don't have the doors locked anymore. They don't have the windows up anymore. Huh? <laughs> they liberated. They stagger out into the Arastaparana and the Ipokoshapalane and Pratosifi. And everybody looks at him and goes, my goodness. It's but the third hour of the day. It's but 9 o'clock in the morning, and these guys are already drunk. And Peter says, we not drunk as you suppose. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And I want to just want to read this verse of Scripture before I close. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that, you know, actually, that's actually how I move into the gift of faith when everything is really bad. I move in the miracle realm. Just start giving thanks. Start praising God. Huh? The great grace that the Lord would provide for us for. He's got, and he's got for us the ability to make it through anything that we'd probably, possibly go through if we just start praising Him, giving thanks. When we begin to reckon with these things that are beyond any rational possibility that a human can do, and we recognize God's calling us into a miracle, and we begin, begin to just praise Him and give thanks, recognize, well, if it's a miracle, that means He's going to do it through me, and I'm excited about getting you know, getting this underway because it's that day, it was that day that the church was born. The church was born in the fires of the Holy Ghost. The church was born in Pentecost. And so long as they had Pentecost, they turned the world upside down. So that Paul said, I have fully preached the gospel with mighty signs and wonders and the power of the Holy Ghost. From Jerusalem to Illyric, the known world was set upon on fire by just a few men and women. And, 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 the, and, and what God has done before, he's done it over and over again. There was only nine, ten people at the meetings there in Wales when Evan Roberts would cry out to God day in, day out, as they would come and assemble themselves together. Just a few people. But they were a few faithful people who had set their heart on heaven to have yet another Wales revi Welsh revival. The revivals of Wales seemed to come every 35, 40 years, a great sovereign moving of God. And this one, there hadn't been a great revival in Wales for some time. And Evan Roberts, being hungry to see the power of God that everybody else talked about, said, what would I have to do in order to be able to be a part of a move of God in my generation? And his pastor taught him, just be in all the meanings. Just go after God with everything that's in you. Don't do anything else that would try to pull on your desires, your affection, don't allow it. Just gave him a basic message. You can read about it in, in, the, in the book, When Glory Filled the Land. The revivalists that I've known, they say, yeah, when I sat in school, all I could do is read the Bible. They, everybody else had their math books open. My, book, my Bible was open. I just laid my Bible right over top of the math book. It looked like I was in the math history class. I did the same thing. All I want to do is I was hungry for the word. I was hung, hungry for the things of the spirit. My desire and my value of success was something that was defined only in the realms of heaven. This is, there is a commonality between, in, among everybody who's ever been used by God in a great way. They baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And what brought them to that baptism was a great hunger and thirsting after righteousness, a, a draw for the things really of the kingdom. And that's just another way of saying a draw for heaven, where Father is. When we say, when we say hungering, thirsting after righteousness, after the kingdom and after his righteousness, we're just talking about his realm, where he's living, where he's at. 
where he exists. Just a few people in a little church turn the world upside down. It busts the walls in no time. When the fire of God fell in the place, when the fire of God fell, and one day, in just one little meeting, they went from fear and intimidation, stumbled into the streets, 3, 000, more than 3,000 people came into the kingdom. As they said, they and staggered around like drunken men. And all, all Peter does is begin to now reveal and make known by revelation what the Word of God means. As he said, turn with me to Joel chapter 2. See, the Lord said, and I'm telling you, I can't get away from this. And I'm just stuck in this, in this realm, in the, in the realms of the Spirit. He said, surely as I live, my glory shall fill the earth. Surely as I live. The prophet Habakkuk said, his glory shall fill the earth. The knowledge of the Lord shall fill the earth. His glory shall fill the earth, in other words, as the water that covers the sea. And then Jesus came up on the scene and he began to talk about a river. He began to talk about a great effulgency of the expression of his own person and power and glory being revealed through humanity, his people, his covenant people. There's a new covenant here, people. There's a new covenant here. Huh. 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 Father, the only way that anything is going to be done, the only thing, way that anything is going to be changed in our life is by the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. By, and the only way He's going to change anything in our life is by our response to Him. The only way things are going to be changed in our life is by the living Word of God, by the powerful, sharp, living Word of God. These things are already a reality. They're not something, they're not events that are going to happen. They're events that have happened. They're, it's, it's a realm that is available right now. It, it, it's, but there's going to be things and choices that we're going to make that we made today and that we're that we're been making and that we're going to make tomorrow that is going to speak far louder than any praise that we would praise and any words or prayers that we would pray or words that we would speak. It's the choices of our life to say, no, Father, I don't want that. I want you because he's looking. His eyes, lids are trying. He's beholding every one of us and seeing, is there anybody who wants to stand with me? Is there anybody that I can entrust with my power, my authority, my glory? Paul said, God counted me worthy. God counted me worthy. God counted me worthy putting me into the ministry, entrusting me with these holy things. Mm. I, I believe, I can feel, I've touched. It's a reality to me of that which God has purposed to do in these last days, of which God has purposed to do in my lifetime while I'm alive. I know that I'm just, I know that I'm being trained by the Spirit of the Lord to take nations. I understand that. I've already had the token of it. It's not like I, I just understand it afar off. You know, I didn't really understand it until it became a reality. And we went in and, and, and God used us to shake nations and, and, and shake a nation that had never had that kind of a visitation. The nation of Nepal. Just to, just to give me... And just to encourage me and say, look, I got great things I want to do through your life. But it's just not me. He's saying to every single human being. He's saying to every person in his house, anybody who will. It's just that I'm just there before him saying, I go to bed at night going, Father, use us. Use me. I mean, you know, Ann was walking around this, this afternoon in the house. And we go to the house and I, I said, Father, Ann and I want to be used by you. It doesn't matter what it takes. Oh, God, send us to the nations of the earth. Oh, God, send us to the churches of America. Lord, no matter what it costs, it's in our hearts. It's by the Spirit. Where are you at? What's your vision of the kingdom? Where is it that you've consecrated your life? How have you come under this rule? How do you begin to be trained? These are important questions that you have to begin to deal with. Because Father has made an, an opportunity given an opportunity for you to step into. It's bigger than anything you've ever asked for and bigger than anything that you've ever dreamed. 
This is where, this is where all the excitement begins. All, all the excitement began right after Acts chapter 2. That's when, that's when the things begin to shake and move. And the power of God began to be revealed. And the earth, the world was turned upside down. The idols that had reigned, the goddess Diana, who had, the goddess of the Ephesians, who had ruled for more than a thousand years, was brought down by the preaching of Paul. And the whole culture of the Ephesians was turned around. The world was turned around at the preaching of Paul. One man stepped into Rome and conquered the Roman Empire. The Apostle Paul. Peter threw in. They tag-teamed. Conquered the empires of the world through the preaching of the gospel, through mighty signs and wonders. Turned the earth upside down. Everything changed. Go back, go back and look. That's why your calendar. Everybody on the earth today gets up and recognizes the day that Jesus was born by saying, it is the year of our Lord, 2014. It is the year 2014, the date numbered from the, de- the birth of Jesus Christ. Everybody, everybody acknowledges the birth of Jesus. All humanity, all flesh acknowledges the birth of Jesus only on basically based on just one simple thing. Their, their responsibility and accountability to a calendar that's based off of him. And based off of any other thing or any other one or any other idea or notion. And, you know, up until just recently, until men became so enlightened and so high on themselves and so drunk in their own deception, that it was said officially in the year of our Lord. But just recently, that the Western world who went with the gospel and educated people and the institutions that, that are now antichrist like Harvard, Princeton, and Oxford were seminaries. Princeton was a Presbyterian seminary. You can still go read the scriptures written on the walls. Huh? At Harvard. There's some scriptures written at UCSD because they try to, act, they try to make it look a little bit like Oxford. Lost identity. Trying to be somebody. Huh? Trying to spit in. Shaking the fist in the hand. People come shaking their fist in the, in the face of the Lord. Coming so educated they don't need the Lord. They've educated themselves beyond God now. He's consecrated us with his blood and with his spirit. Not to live our own life, but to live his life. The new covenant is that we no longer live. That's the new covenant. I I think that people would do very well to just stop and meditate right there. New covenant. What is this new covenant? He exchanged his life for ours. What a deal. We've exchanged our life for his. He took our place that we might take his. He took our place and bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we now being dead to sin might live unto righteousness by whose wound we were healed. So that now we can take his place in this world and go everywhere and cast out devils and destroy the works of the devil and advance those things that belong to to the kingdom of God and Father's petition and plea and love for man through the power and the demonstration of the work of the Holy Ghost through our life just as Jesus did it, that it's a consecration. It's a, res- it's a, re- it's a resolve to, to now step into a place of ruling and reigning with Him right now, living out this life. Christ Jesus. Take a step of faith. Step out of the world that you've been trapped in. Step out of the world that you became enslaved to. Take a risk. Take a risk. Somebody said, well, what if I lose my house? Well, I'll give you a better one. In fact, he's already given you a better one. 
He's already prepared a better place for you. Do you think that God's going to let what the treason and the rebellion and the unholy acts of this nation, especially over the past couple of years, if you think he's going to let it stand and things are going to go on the same, when we said that God is not the God of this nation, that we're a nation of many gods and of many religions, we didn't realize that we were not only telling the Lord that he's not our Lord anymore, we were telling him we don't want your provision anymore and we don't want your protection anymore. That's the first, this is the first in the history of this nation. There's nothing else like it in any other time. Though there has been many ills and evils and things that were done wrong in this nation since this birth, never before in the history of this nation have the things gone down that have gone down and taken place in the last two years. In the last two years. The representatives and the powers that be of our land have made a choice for us, and that's the way it stands. That's the way it works. That's the way it works in the kingdom. I'm just saying, I wouldn't put my trust in riches if I were you, because you're going to lose them anyways. And you're going to probably lose your house anyways. It's if, you're, if, that's, if that's what you're living for, you're going to lose it. If you're not living for that, you'd be in a mansion when everybody else is wandering around. Because Father's going to take care of you. You put your trust in him, he's going to take care of you. You trust in yourself, you got yourself. He lets you choose. It's not like he's putting it on you. You put it on you. No, I'm, I, I got it. Okay, well then go for it. Go for it. Huh? Jesus, help us. We ain't got nothing. We live in a little fantasy worlds. Go from our little living rooms to our little offices or classrooms in our little buggy. In a little false world. It's true. It's true. It's true. You spend one year out in the elements, out in the woods somewhere, your whole life will be changed. Totally redefined for you. It's, you begin to deal with the frailty of your life. <laughs> you have a different view of things. I'm just saying, you know, we've, we've, got, we've, just, we've got to begin to deal with the opportunities that Father has given us. And I know the pressure that is on you. And I, I know the, 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 the demonic pressure, the financial pressure, the social pressure, the cultural pressure. The only way you're going to be able to be, even begin to deal with this is by the, being baptized in the Holy Ghost and, power, and fire. Being overwhelmed and encountered with God. And that's going to happen because that's what you want more than anything else. And there's a, these things are available to you here tonight. There's choices that you have to make. You've made the right choices to be here. You've made the right choices to give your life over to Jesus and to follow him. You've made the right choices to receive power from on high and to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, the Lord wants to take you to another level. He, he wants you to make the choices now to go everywhere and represent him. He wants you to make the choices... To begin to mind spiritual things. To give, your, to give yourself, set, set another value system on your life. And let that value system be determined by the kingdom of God, what, what Father holds valuable. So we read here in Joel chapter 2. And... Joel says, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Speak right by the Spirit. Speak out those things which are going on in heaven, declaring the things that are happening in heaven. On Sunday night, last Sunday night, or our Wednesday night, we left out of here on Wednesday night. We got in the truck. I couldn't quit. I couldn't stop prophesying. This that almost a day, I tell you, I'm a And then the declarations of the things that God is doing, just flowing out, just a, being in the meeting where everybody just here in the place, just falling down before the Lord, just saying, "Lord, bend me, break me, Lord. I want to be broken before you. I want in my life to say, I'm under. I come under your rule. 
I just want to do what pleases you. I want to do what you've defined for me to do. I'm done with my own life. That is the atmosphere where the Spirit of the Lord is poured out. The Lord's called you and me to come and live in that atmosphere. Come live in that realm of glory. Hoo-hoo. ha Brosetina. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You stay in that atmosphere, sickness can't bother you. You stay in that atmosphere, sin and iniquity grieves you. It doesn't draw you. It grieves you. It is an offense to you. <laughs> Father has poured out his Holy Spirit, his spirit of holiness, the same life moving force that he himself is under, the same the same spirit that gives him the, 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 his perspective of life, his value of life, his purpose of life, his meaning of life, what he, that, that defines what he wants and what he chooses, been given to you and me. Wow. And out of that, we get to step over now and interact with a whole other dimension. And that's why we come into these dreams so that we can see that which is really going on in the reality of what's happening in the kingdom of God. Vision so we can understand what's really taking place, governing all that, could take, that, we, that we see with our eyes and hear with our ears. Power and authority out of that heavenly realm that we interact with and we mature in and we grow in. Now to speak his word of life and his word of authority as his representatives. And see then everything that belongs to the ministry of Jesus revealed to our lives. And especially the dimensions of his love and grace and mercy and affections and goodness. But also deliverance not only for the soul and spirit but also for the body. In the context of this work of grace, we hear the Lord say in verse 1, Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord comes, for it is at, not near, it's at hand. It's a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, as great people and strong... There hath not been ever the like of them. Neither shall there ever be the like of them anymore for many generations. A fire devours before them. And behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden. And before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yes, and nothing shall escape. Their, appear, their appearance of them is the appearance of horses. And the horsemen, and as the horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains, shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in a battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the walls like men of war. They shall march every one on his way, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust against the other they shall walk every one in his path and when they fall upon the sword they shall not be wounded they shall run and to and fro in the city they shall run upon the wall they shall climb up upon the houses they shall enter in at the window as a thief <laughs> the earth shall quake before them the heavens shall tremble the sun and the moon shall be dark the stars shall withdraw their shining and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army God's talking about the mighty people who's executing his will. Executing his will on the level that Enoch said, I see the Lord. He's coming with ten thousands of his saints to execute his judgment upon all the ungodly, for all the ungodly deeds which they've ungodly committed. And we see this are going to be ultimately fulfilled when we come with the Lord Jesus Christ at the end of, a, of an event that's about to take place on the earth called the Great Tribulation or the seven years of tribulation upon the earth. But there's, this army is already mobilized. The army is mobilized by the Spirit of the Lord to deal with these things in the Spirit. To be able to effectively deal with spiritual wickedness in high places. To have authority over Satan. To, dist to crush his power under our foot. I mean, as Paul said to the, to the church at Rome, God will crush Satan under your, under your feet shortly. 
In other words, Father is going to give you absolute dominion over Nero and everything that belongs to the power of Rome shortly. The authority that has been given to the church will shake this earth. Watch what happens. It has happened over and again. This nation was born in, the, in what we call the Great Awakening, in the revival fires of 1736. The revival fires that came up into seven, in the mid-1700s, up into 1776 and 1780. The great reformations and changes of, this, of our nation that structured the, the, the Constitution to where it offered more freedoms and more liberties under the influence of Andy Jackson was the Second Great Awakening. There was a fear of God. There was, there was, a, there was a, a people who reverenced the things of the Lord that was commonality, a common state to both of those great awakenings now we're in a place where there is no fear of God for man has grown beyond God in its existence and father says there's going to be gross darkness over the earth and gross darkness upon the people but you rise and you shine because the glory of the Lord has risen upon you like the rising of the noonday sun his glory the light that our light has come our light has come. Our light, Christ Jesus, has come. His very life, His very manifest presence. Satan's doing everything he can do to run interference in your life, to give you another identity, to draw you away through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. He hunts the souls of men through sin to destroy them. There's other things that you can be doing. He does all, whatever, whatever is going to pull your string, I guarantee you, he's going to use that. If a flat tire is going to keep you from church, you're going to have a flat tire every time you go or get ready to go. If a headache is going to keep you from church, you're going to have a headache. The devil will see to it. Huh? If something, if some, something in your world is going to keep you back from obeying God and fulfilling God, that thing will always exist in your world. Satan runs that kind of influence and that kind of interference. But what happens when he can't touch you? Then no matter what. Uh-huh. As my mother would always say, come hell or high water, we're doing exactly what God said to do. Come hell or high water and get that, get that frown off your face. Or I'm going I'm to spank it off you right now. I mean, that's mom. You get happy right now because we're the people of God. We're representing God. And you can either get happy by choice or I'm going to beat you happy. <laughs> Thanks, fa- thank you, Father, for our Holy Ghost mom. Hallelujah. Oh, a faith, a mama faith. Huh? Hey, she's radical, wasn't she? She's still radical. She's in heaven. <laughs> thank, thank you, Father. Huh? Because our representation and, and, what, and who we are in the kingdom of God was far more important than our identity and our purpose in this earth. I praise the Lord that I got brainwashed by the word of the word. At an early age. You know, a friend of mine is probably watching right now. I love him so much. And he was ministering at a crusade down in Mexico. And, you know, three people were deaf and mutes, never spoke, never heard. And the first word they said was Jesus first word they heard was the preacher saying say Jesus say Jesus the first word they uttered was Jesus and his comment wasn't wouldn't it be beautiful if the first word that human beings learned when they came into this world was not mama and daddy but Jesus hey hallelujah come on man the only way you're ever going to be valiant man and woman of God who's going to stand in the face of those things that would defy God. Because it was mighty men. Abner was a mighty man. There was great, might, and great mighty men standing around Saul in the days of Goliath, the champion of the Philistines. But there was only one person who could take him on. Somebody who'd been sitting in the presence of the Lord being moved by the Spirit. 
Hallelujah. Only one person that can take on the giants of darkness, the powers of darkness, and you believe me. I'm going to tell you right now, as real as you sit in the presence of men, you sit in the presence of angels. As real as you live and walk in the presence of men, you live and walk in the presence of angels. And the activity of the prince and the power of the year is measurable. And more people are influenced on a daily basis and come under his influence and his power and yield to his demands than yield to the Spirit of the Lord. If you could set your heart tonight with me on becoming a part of this army that God right now is uttering his voice before. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking right now. He's calling us to take part in this wonderful dimension of divine authority. Jesus is above all principalities and powers and mights. He's above all the, the strongest demon spirit, the strongest angel of darkness. Lucifer himself. And he's asking you and me to stand with him in that authority. And I'm telling you right now, I'm here tonight to lead you into that place. I'm here tonight, to, I'm here tonight by the Spirit of the Lord to sort you out. I'm here tonight by the Spirit of the Lord to speak these words until the fire of God falls upon you and everything is revealed and the light of his glory shines upon your life and what's ever there has got to be made manifest. Father wants to, in his loving kindness, come and prove us. And if there's disobedience and defiance, it's going to be seen. Because he is the one who destroys defiance. That's Rahab. That's another name for Egypt. It means defiance. He's here, as in the days of old, to wound the head of the dragon. <laughs> Hallelujah. The power of Satan. To break off all the strongholds of iniquity. And the things in the realm of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, the things that Satan uses to hunt the souls of men, that still is able to captivate you, that has caused your children to lose their attention. They're not captivated by the Holy Ghost. I'm, I, listen, I'm just telling you right now. If, if some of, I'm just telling some of you. If my children sit in church as your children do, not captivated by the presence, captivated by the presence of the Lord, I would take them home and we would have a very serious talking to we have a conversation I made sure that my children were protected in the in, in in the glory realms of heaven I made sure that they were standing there in that place they belonged to his his glory and his manifest power Parents, you need to wake up. <laughs> I say this, I say this with every, I say this with every group of people that come through here and every group of people who have little kids. And then when their kids get older, they're looking at me with a little bit more of, what, what was that you were saying? Well, it's a little bit too late now. You're going to have to start praying a different kind of prayer now. I've watched as parents were defiant and rebellious and acted like they knew just as much as I knew. What I know isn't in for me. What I know, the Holy Ghost is given and he gives it by his choice because he divides individually to each man. What I know, what I speak, hasn't even nothing to do with me. Other than the Father has appointed me to be a watchman in his house, to be a shepherd among his sheep. And people just want to make it all about that which belongs to a human realm. And so they just sit there with their, their rebellion and their defiance, and then you watch their children rebel and de defy. And most of them are gone, and their children are gone. And they don't go to church anymore because they made choices. And you're making choices, believe me. The fire of God's real hot in here. Papa's going to make room for the lost. Father's going to get rid of every religious thing and every defiant thing so he can bring in a harvest. Not only here, but in his church, in the world, in the, in the U.S., in Europe. God is going to use us to shake Europe. We will shake Europe by the power of the Holy Ghost. I had a, pro I had a prophet guy stand in front of me many years ago. He said, your son, you got a son. He's 12 years old. His name's Joshua. He said, he'll shake, the, he'll shake Europe. He'll shake the continent. 
we know the Father's preparing us for things that are unimaginable. You know, I love hearing, I love hearing stories about athletes who achieved greatness in, 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 in competition and things that they did who ultimately were declaring that they were going to the top when they were a nobody and they couldn't even, they weren't really even skilled at what they were doing, but they had a hunger. They had a hunger to succeed. They had a hunger to do it. And they came under such intense training. I used to love hearing Joy Baran tell about how he was going to win the Pipe Masters and he couldn't even stand up in the white water when he was telling people what he was going to do. But what they didn't realize is that he was hungry. He was so hungry for it that he was going to be out there eight hours a day. He was going to get up early in the morning. And, his, and every time, every little bit of spare moment he had, he was going to be in the waves. And a guy from, you know, an inlander from nowhere ultimately goes and outdoes the people who were, you know, born into that culture. The hunger of it. Because I'm telling you right now, all of a sudden you begin to set your heart on things and you begin to you set your heart on what Father has said. Listen, he's given us a vision. You set your heart on it. And you want this stuff. More than anything else, you'll have it. But you've got to want what he has for you more than anything else. Father's kingdom is really alive and well and at work. And his people are alive and well and at work. And though it may look like right now that things are all falling apart and that his house is divided, the kingdom of God will stand forever. The kingdom of God cannot be divided. It's baptized in one body. It's not divided by men. It came from heaven at the master's command. Father's given you an invitation to step in. But you can't bring your stuff with you. You got to leave all that behind. He's going to give you new clothes, new wardrobe. He's going to give you every, everything about your life he's going to make new. And here's where it all begins. It all begins. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. That filled the place where they were gathered. And clothing tongues came and rested upon each one of them. And they all began to speak with other langu- another language. A heavenly language. As the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. Suddenly there's a sound from heaven. Suddenly there's a rushing mighty wind. Suddenly as you s- sit here obeying the Lord Jesus Christ. Hungry to be a part of that which his ministry has made provision for. Suddenly, an overwhelming, glorious outpouring of divine power and grace begins to be made manifest through your life. (laughs) Just by simple obedience. But it's an obedience that's willing to walk away truly from everything. In total surrender and consecration to the Lord, watch as the power of God begins to do those things that he described, both in terms of provision for you and protection for your life. And the provision that comes on the level of everything that you have need of to fulfill this supernatural work of faith with power. The Spirit of the Lord is here right now. The power of the Holy Ghost is here right now. People who have started off in the meeting hungry, they should be more hungry now. People who started off thirsty should be more thirsty now. And the good news is anyone who's hungry, you don't go away empty. If you're thirsty, 
He's here to give you to drink. So lift your hands towards heaven. Father, we thank you for your mercy. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the working of your mighty power. We thank you. Father, I thank you for supernatural changes right now. Lord, we thank you that you made your, your glory, your grace, your working available to every single person that's sitting in this place right now. And I ask, Father, in Jesus' name, that your glory overwhelm them now. That your touch from heaven overwhelm them now. That an encounter with you results in a change and a consecration. Father, that goes beyond just to, it just goes beyond the sense of your joy. It goes beyond the sense of your love. It goes beyond the sense of your peace. It goes into a place of consecration to you and commitment to you. That, 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 that what you want to do with our life is more important than anything else. And we give ourselves to you fully, Father God, so that your will may be done in our lives and through our lives. Just like you described in your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prusan brusheke to yasi. Hallelujah. 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 Poco nane ishe. Now, who, who is there? Anyone with anyone with any sickness in your body? Anybody with sickness in your body? Anybody with pain, sickness in your body? Why don't you just come? Come here. You, you come here. Anybody who's pain or any kind of sickness and disease or in your body, just want you to come here. Come stand up here. Now, anyone in here, you've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost. You've not received power from on high. And you really, you want to be used by the Lord. The only reason we receive power from on high is to learn how to function in all the authority that Jesus revealed in his ministry. And the evidence of that power and authority is the language of the Spirit coming up out of us, strengthens us and builds us, builds us up. So that we can walk in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might and execute His will against all spiritual wickedness that would manifest all these things, sickness, and disease, and torment in the lives of people. So if you've not received power from on high and you're hungry to begin to step into the ministry of Jesus, the Lord's here to fill you up and touch you, fill you up with all the good things of heaven and baptize you. At the same time, immerse you down into the glory of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> now, let me just say this again. You, you got to want these things more than anything else. And you got to deal with the stuff that makes you numb. You got to deal with the things that just, you know... Leave you passionateless. Because everything about God and the moving of the gods, of God's Holy Spirit is full of passion and determination. You, you got to turn your heart to God. You got to get, get so real with God that you're, you're not condemned and feel like a failure, but you've got to call up to a higher realm, and now you begin to deal with the reality of the things that you're not doing right and the things that you haven't been willing to yield to the Lord in, and you begin to get passionate and say, I want change, rather than just sit there and be condemned and under the influence of a demon spirit. People come under the influence of a demon spirit. And, it, 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 and, and it, you know, it's like, really... It's like they've handled the holy things too much and now they've lost their feeling. And you don't want that. And you don't even want to run the risk of it. You just want to turn your heart towards heaven. You know, and 
it's just saying, Lord, it's really the heart saying, Father, I am going to do those things which you said to do. I want what you have for me more than anything else in this life. See, you've heard the word of God, but there's got to be responsiveness. You just can't just sit there and listen. There's got to be some place and point in this meeting that you begin to respond. And to tell you the truth, I haven't felt much of a response. That's why I just kept on going, just trying, just waiting. So I'm going to just, I just said, okay, well, the Spirit of the Lord just, just started praying for people. So I said, okay, Lord, we just changed it. Begin to move in whatever dimension of the anointing that we can move in. Because you're going to have to respond to God. You're going to have to say, yes, Father, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. You're going to, have to, you're going to have to determine. Because otherwise, you're going to set your mind on things of what you can accomplish in this world. Some career idea. Some financial goal. You know, some, you know, some earthly purpose. When the word of the Lord goes forth, grab a hold of it. Say, this is me. This is what I have. This is what I'm going to do. Mm-mm-mm. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus. 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 Let no one be without these things. Let no one be without the heart and the disposition of heart that you demand. Forsaking all. Leaving everything. Taking no thought for what you should wear. Taking no thought for what you should eat. But going after, first and foremost, the principle, the purpose, the, the decision-making factor, the motivating factor. Having those things which God has purposed to reveal in our life. A reality in their life. Mm -mm. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. So tell me, tell me what's wrong. Okay. What do you, do you, I want to, uh, first of First, we're, well, we're going to pray for you and minister to you so that that goes. But there's a way that you can live in divine health. If you would give yourself to praying in the Holy Ghost, I mean, really praying in the Holy Ghost to where you touch heaven, what would happen was, would be this. When anything tries to affix itself to you like a virus or a flu, a disease, anything, a bacteria, anything in that realm, you can literally buy that robo sicara na mambra bekila na manganda do borostote de besitara na arabe bekili armo sobre nala na manaxia saranai and staying there until it breaks that that realm of heaven begins to break forth through you with greater authority it would stop sickness before it even advances in your body now you what i'm telling what i'm speaking here right now i'm saying to everybody those things cannot have, if you stay in the flow of the Holy Ghost. See, we, 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 we begin to prophesy here tonight about what this meeting was supposed to be about, but we had to take a turn. We had to take a turn, but we began to prophesy, asking Father. We said, Lord, glorify yourself, magnify yourself, exalt yourself in your name in the midst of your church through the flowing forth of love, through the flowing forth of peace, through the flowing forth of joy. We begin to cry out to God, Lord, exalt your name, glorify your name, magnify your name through these signs and wonders and miracles. This is, this is, what, the pop, this is what Father wants to do. This is what he's purposed to do in the meeting. <laughs> this is an opportunity for you not to practice a gift of the Spirit, but to get one. It's not an opportunity for you to just practice a gift of the Spirit, but actually to step into one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you, there is a realm. And all you have to do is say, Lord, I want this realm. I'm, I'm going to just tell you, dear people, I live in this realm. I know this realm. If I did not live in this realm, I'd be just as sick as everybody else. I'd have, I'd go through the, I'd have the same stuff. You know why? Because I know over and again, I have watched as God, the Holy Spirit, praying through me, making intercession through me, as this authority began to flow out of me, sickness and disease broken before it ever stopped. Tricks of Satan, things that the powers of darkness would try to do to steal and kill and destroy, stopped before they ever got, get underway. 
And I've often thought, how is it that people even survive without allowing this divine authority to flow through them and break off these things that would try to fix itself to their body and to their mind? And it's just the mercy of the Lord that people survive as well as they do. He goes, you know, you walk into the presence of the Lord. And, I mean, you need to stay in the presence of the Lord because Satan definitely wants to take you out. And goodness of God is that he's going to make sure that he protects you. Amen. He's just amazing God, even though you basically give him 30 minutes a day, if that. There's a lot of folks that go to church Mondays. They don't give God 30 minutes. Honestly. And then this just really needs to stop. You need to have an encounter with God that fills your, fills your day. Fills it. Now, I'm talking about fills you in such a way that you touch heaven, heaven touches you. I'm talking about, touch, I'm talking about interacting with God in such a way. It can start with just whatever. But it needs to go to a place where the manifest presence and the power of God touches you. To where that you know you're standing in the presence of the Lord. Hey? Eh? Now I command that thing, get off of you. It dries up. Now, nah, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Back style. Just start walking in greater authority now. Long J, look over you. See, you just start walking in greater authority. I tell you right now, I know good and well. Father, uh, uh, bust loose authority through your spirit. I'm telling you, I, I have an understanding that you are a woman that's ferocious, that can take a hold of the power of God and not back down to anything. Now, in Jesus' name. Just live in that realm now. Itastaya. Itastaya mokata. Itasterine. See, the reality is we preach for a while and we can't get people to receive the authority of the Word. We start moving in other dimensions so people can see that there's enough power around to change you. You have to reach out. You have to reach out and touch him. You have to say within your heart, if I can but touch him, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, he's here to be touched. And when you touch him, power, you feel your, his power flow into you. When you touch him, you feel his power flow into you. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. Thank you, Jesus. What's up? Cold. In Jesus' name, I hate colds. Now, now, look, Jacqueline, so would you like to walk in divine health? Okay, well, it's, it's pretty easy to do this. First of all, you just decide, Lord, I want to walk in divine health. And you decide that, and then you ask him to show you how to live a life of authority over sickness and disease. And now he's going to answer you. And then, of course... The direction and instruction that I would give to you is exactly what I just gave. <clears throat> to where that you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You begin to cry out to the Lord. Just talking with Him. Just ministering to Him. Just being in His presence. And anything that would try to affix itself to your body gets broken off before it can ever set in. God give you a Holy Ghost immunity. Now, in Jesus' name, I command this old sinus stuff and nasally stuff, dry up. Dry up. Dry up right now in Jesus' name. Flu goes. The flu goes. I think the flu is a, ter the flu is a terrible thing. <clears throat> Any kind of respiratory thing. You know, I drink a little bit of that water. <clears throat> any kind of a respiratory thing it attacks the breath of God and it's just terrible isn't it it's demonic breathe in real deep this is better than NyQuil watch this better than antihistamines I mean, the Lord has given us power to raise the dead. I mean, goodness gracious. Little flus and colds. I mean, two hands for beginners, though, right? You can deal with flus and colds. 
you start feeling a little itchy throat, throat shouldn't even get to that far far but if you do you just take authority of it you see you foul thing you foul spirit of sickness and disease get out of my body instead of oh it's a virus well what's that Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Summer, what do you need, dear? <clears throat> okay. You're going to be strengthened by the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> right in your inner being. You strengthened right now in Jesus' name by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, Romasane, Robasuye. Robo Ramande Ebrese E Russo Robake Gilisusta. Membrena seo. Membrena seo. Membrena bandaleo. Membrena bandaleo. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for your keeping power, your protecting protecting power. Every demon spirit, every lying spirit, every force of hell and of darkness. I thank you, Father, that you show Summer how to take authority over it instead of coming under its authority, how to be the influencer instead of being influenced. Amen. 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 Satan, you listen to me. I smash you right now. You foul spirit of hell. You have no right to mess with anybody in this place that's under my influence. Hallelujah. Katai and name. Now, if you don't like me, you're going to have to take care of yourself. <laughs> Amen. But everybody's under my influence. I tell you right now, Satan's got to leave you alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Somebody said, oh, well, you know, then somebody, they, witch doctor or whatever, they curse me. I tell you right now, witch doctor is nothing. <laughs> Isn't it goodness gracious? Huh? A person one day old in the Lord has more power than a person who gave themselves whole life to trying to, to do things by a demon spirit. A person one day old in the Lord, more powerful. Hallelujah. And Father, I thank you for strengthening Summer and her spirit and her body. Sudana Mangjaya. Alamein Jusarusase. Longolea. Now, I, you know, I'm, I, I try to be real careful about, you know, people who are younger in the Lord. Trying to take on and deal with people who, who, who demon power in their life. And I just tell you right now, this is why you need to have a prayer life. We, 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 we deal all the time when folks want to go out and begin to be used with the Lord. They don't have prayer life. And then they get start getting retaliation from demon spirits you know what I'm saying that they that occupy people's life that they're trying to minister to and then they don't know what's coming there that's coming from prayer life just breaks all of it hallelujah now and I thank you Holy Spirit for your protection right here father I thank you for people of the spirit come around summer not people who haven't made up their mind you don't know whether they're going to be walking with God this time next year or not. You know what? I'll be walking with the Lord this time next year. I assure you. In fact, I'll be preaching the gospel this time in the next year. Hallelujah. God, I said, because I'm kept by the power of God. Nothing can pluck me out of his hand. I've got to made up mine. I decided a long time ago. I counted the price, cost. Settled out with God. Amen. Amen. Besides that, I've got Jesus praying for me. I got the Holy Ghost praying for me. And I got the Father praying for me. And Ann praying for you. Of course, I have my wife praying for me. (laughs) 
<laughs> what do you need? Just want to touch heaven. You just want to touch heaven. Well, heaven wants to touch you. And Raphael. Hallelujah. 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 Casatea. Raphael. Hallelujah. I'm a good Jake. I dear. I'm not shake a pie. Stay in the most of the time. Lure a Hara. Hallelujah. 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 Rafe. 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 He's healer God. He's the God of insigns. Hallelujah. Rafe. El. Hallelujah. Sutoto in the ixe. Sikopomanea. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of counsel and understanding. I thank you, Father, for the spirit of strength and of might. I thank you, Father God, for the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. I thank you for the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. To hate evil. To be able to be equipped to stand against all iniquity. Even though you live in a perverse and adulterous generation. Even though you live in an age and a time where men cannot see, who, who eyes are full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. You can understand how to live with him. Hallelujah. Erabastoye. <laughs> Mambrukaya, Sebero Sustafra. Lando, Lambadoya, Lambadoya. I want you to ask yourself how many people are going to come into the kingdom through your prayer life? How many people are going to come to the king, into the kingdom because you prevail with God in prayer and intercession? I want you to ask God how many people are going to be changed because you allow the rivers of, the living, of living water to issue forth from you and communicate the very presence of the power of God that brings down the strongholds of Satan and the lies of darkness. Listen, I want you to talk to yourself right now. You need to commune yourself. We'll be back to you in a minute. Ask Father about you. Say, Father, what is it going to take to break me out of my own head knowledge? Father, what's going to take me? What's going to take to break me into a greater hunger and thirsting? What's going to take? What's going to take to break me into a greater passion for you? Seek Allah, Mose. Now, in the name of Jesus, right now, in the name of Jesus. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, in the name of Jesus. You don't have any excuses. You hear me? As long as you have an excuse, you have a reason not to do the things that you're supposed to do. So now in Jesus' name, no more excuse. No more excuse. Now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. The glory and the presence of the living God takes hold of your life. No more death and destruction. No more torment. No more shame. No more. In Jesus' name. No more. Falling down under the influence of temptations. No more. But now the authority of the Spirit of the Lord able to rise up in you to stop everything that Satan would do to destroy you. To ruin you. In Jesus' name, be fortified. Be fortified. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your mighty signs and wonders. Thank you, Father, for your miracles. Thank you, Father, for assurance and authority. Thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father, for assurance. I thank you for boldness and competence. I thank you for a miracle right here, right now, in Jesus' name. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. A joy and rejoicing. A bone to say. Ha ha. Guramande exhalo. Membresu. Membresu te at te oposa. 
Membre ge e de bos evrea. Membre ge le mon jesili o to. Membre besilo suvre visis du susai. Lere dos inai e te cuya. Mange e sito e ne e peo. Hallelujah. E zuru. Le nanana ne mea ne mongore se. Mola mangere manea. Now let me just tell you something. Those of you who don't really feel anything. If I come over to you and I lay my hands on you, you're going to start feeling something. It's going to rock you on the inside. All I want to say is, you need to have that for yourself in your relationship with the Lord. I don't mind helping. But there's got to come a point where you step over and you can have that any time. We want you to, we want you to begin to participate as the body of Christ in what's happening right now. We want you to begin to participate in the realms of the Spirit. We want you to hook up. Don't go somewhere else. Hook up. Come over here. Come right on over here with your, with your spiritual self. Amen. <laughs> Come on, hallelujah. Come on, on over here and hook into the realms of glory. Ha, thambogalea. No spectators in the kingdom of God. No taters at all. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 It's true. It's true. You don't have to close your eyes and go away. I'm saying hook up. I mean, look, the, I'll, I'll have to minister on that another night. Dear, what is it that you want? Because whatever you want, the Lord is going to do for you. Well, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, look at me. I command you, <laughs> be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled out of your innermost being without any effort on your part. You don't even have to try. Just rest and relax. Just enjoy. <laughs> out of your belly flows these rivers of the Holy Ghost. Dog Jake, oh, yeah, basate, alabasade, bro. Lirisea mana name Joe la mangea sai eki la basata e la mangiata ese eredai ravate Father, I thank you for this overwhelming flow of your presence right here. And everything that has tried to stop and hinder. And everything that has tried to work in offense. Right now in Jesus' name, no more. No more but a freedom. A flow, a relationship, a glory, a divine glow by the power of the living God in Jesus' name. Ah, hallelujah. Woo! Longona, longa mane, longa mane zara, longa mane zara neya, longa den desero monya. That's it. Longa mana jada nea. Now I'm gonna come help some of you. You guys just look stuck to me. I just do you just look stuck. Bok se kara mai. Buddha. Buddha day. Basata. Manda. Mona boya. Manzato. Me ay ay say ade giga. Ade usu. Dunze nambran. Ha. Mambrella. So I start moving out here and people start getting activated. Look at it. Come on now. Come on now. Hook up as the body of Christ. Because begin to move in the same Holy Ghost, same spirit, same purpose, same interest. Lusatoya. Lusatoya mine. Lusatoya ma. Sutore aseke ne monjese. Mande eya busuronea eya shea. Mendea. Monzan. Mendea po. Beke. Ne ma sheku taya ha. Monjese. Mana na ya say, mana na nga bai, man jay a tust. Hale man jay a pro. Zera da di debre bay, no zara na ya. Neng jay ka po ya. Hey, mong zara da ya kasta. Mong bay a lahan, mong ba lahan a ya ha. Mong la mana esse tu, man debre bayo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Boro de, gara so. Bam blang jayo. Bam blang jayo. Bam blang jayo. Membre da ya sebo. Mana mana na ya na mana na mana na na mana da da ba da di se da da ba da bu da da ba da ge ju la da ba ya. Ba ha 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 ha
In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, the breaking forth of your spirit, O God, the breaking forth of your divine power and anointing, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Kurusurini. Hiro Monje. In a mongre say, Lorabai, Osta, Bereste. Where was I? Hallelujah. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Lift both hands towards heaven. You sick in your body? You want to be healed? Are you going to be healed? Are you going to be, are you going to be healed right now? Is it going to happen to you right now? Didn't be healed. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with your neck? What, you have authority over pain. Let me show you. You have, a, you have authority over pain. Now try it out. You have authority. How are you doing? Ah, is that pretty amazing? See, now you have that from here on out. Okay? Amazing. All right. He's like, all right. <laughs> give him just, like, God just healed you, man. I mean, give me just a little bit more than that. Oh, well, I, all the pain's gone. Well, it's working. It's big. Ah, you got to get more excited than that. I mean, come on. Come on. That ain't even right. Hey, look at these people on, you know, these money shows, and, and they get like they win like, you know, five thousand dollars, and they're jumping around. And we got something far better than that. The Price is Right. The Price is Right. The Price is Right, right here, right now, in Jesus' name. You take a hold of the riches. You take a hold of the riches. You take a hold of the riches. You take hold of the riches. Take hold of the riches. Of the riches. Now in Jesus' name. Now in the name of Jesus. You take hold of the riches. Miles are dead or night. Mile and Coda die. Take hold of the riches. Take hold of the riches. Take hold of the riches. Oh my. Oh, this uh, old chap. The Lord just healed me. I, wow. <laughs> What's up? Out! Now, Spirit. out! Look here. Now, come here again. I'm not done. You ducked. <laughs> out! You're out! Yes, You're leaves you alone. Yes. Now, in Jesus' name, be strengthened by the Spirit of the Lord. Be strengthened by the power of His mind. Be filled up with His love. Receive all the good things that He has for you. Huh? <laughs> He said his affection's on you. I mean, my goodness. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We got you that time. Limon. All right, Mendel. Let you not your heart be troubled. Don't be let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be, I don't have a troubled heart. I don't allow a troubled heart for more than two minutes. As soon as I'm aware of it, that's I just say that in expression. As soon as I'm aware, wait a minute, I got a troubled heart. This isn't God. I shut it down. Because what is that going to work in me? That's going to work everything opposite what God the Holy Ghost wants to work in me. That's a lie working against me. That's trouble working against me. 
That's fear working against me. That's condemnation working against me or torment working against me or some kind of harassment. My members are for the Holy Ghost. My members are for the, the things that belong to truth and, and, that, and, and, what, and the ministry of the, uh, of, the, of the Holy Ghost, the ministry of, of, of the kingdom of God. And that's not trouble. I mean, that's authority. That's empowerment. That's courage, assurance. That's the realms of faith, not doubt. Hallelujah. Now, Claire, what's up? It's almost all gone. Well, you know that, Claire, you know that you had been anointed by the Holy Ghost. Do you know that you the anointed of the Lord? You know there's a special anointing upon your life? Yes, there is. And I am determined to see you step into it. To see you take a hold of boldness and confidence. You know, the disciples, they had to pray. They said, you know, we've, we've been threatened. We're kind of like under a you know, a power of intimidation here. They said that if we preach anymore in the name of Jesus, they're going to throw us in jail or kill us. So they said, Lord, grant us boldness is key. A lot of people are running around trying to do things without boldness. So Claire, in Jesus' name, I'm asking Father to grant Claire boldness. <laughs> That's what I kind of church for. You see the anointing on people. That's it. That's it. You see the anointing break forth on people's life. Asia Bruce night. And the anointing of the Holy Ghost wants to break forth on your life. And if I stand praying for you long enough, I promise you, we're going to get something happen. We'll get something to happen. We'll get something to happen. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, I, and I don't, mind, I don't mind helping out in that way. We don't want anybody to be isolated. We don't want anybody to live under fear and hurt and torment. People live under the hurts and the torment and the pain, the things that have been posed upon them in a demonic world. And Jesus gave us power to bust that, smash it. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands towards heaven, holy man of God, and be filled with the Spirit. Just be filled. Just be filled. He so die, uza dera nai. Hallelujah. Rudare se tu keya, uza dia nea pushatai. Luda sita renea tishpa. Luca naya fana do pori shi. Luca naya futa pona nea sai. Ora sirene sikita. Luda nanda isiti. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the anointing. Living God. The living God. Living God. Living God, shake Cade, shake him, shake him with your presence, shake him with your power, cook him Holy Spirit, cook him on the inside, cook him on the outside, cook him all over again, hallelujah, hallelujah, sitana nea shake, oh you sit the kuni ike, Papa God, in long name, long beginning, long name, long Holy Spirit, cook them, on the name, cook them, cook them, cook them, cook them, cook them, cook them. That's how the cannibals, ex-cannibals pray. That's how they call for the fire of God. Cook them. I kid you not. That's how they sing for the fire of the Holy Ghost to come. Cook them, Holy Spirit. Cook them on the inside. Could come on the outside. It's beautiful when you hear the Papua New Guineans, the people from Irian Jaya and Wewak begin to sing Kukum Holy Spirit. It's a powerful move of God. Sutaranea say. Sutaranea say a po. Masikana say a tie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rusatan. Rusanea. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hasatere nese. Hale mongadaya. Hale mongarasatea. Hallelujah. 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 I think I promised you to go to Iri and Jaya. I think, didn't I? I believe I promised. That's why I'm thinking about this. Hey. See, now you'll say. Echo now you say. I believe that that's what happened. Father, I just thank you. Just, just take this anointing that you placed in my life and let it go right over here. And right down into. Sink into. Flow out of. Hasina. <laughs> huh. What is it that you want? Huh? Jesus. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for... Lord Jesus, we thank you for rocking this life. Cook them. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What's up? Well, you can have that. Lord, we thank you for that. Just look at me. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that changes everything. Father, I thank you for your work of faith with power. Thank you, Father, for the work of faith with power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ira satara na ishi. Ira satara na adishi. Ira satara na ishi shapro. This the path. This the path. This the path right. The bravest. The bravest. The bravest. Brava sovrai. Bravest the bravest. Bravest sovrai batas. What's up, Bobby? How'd you do that? Okay. So lift your hands way up. Does it hurt right there? No, it just hurts when I run and jump. Just hurts when you run and jump? Look, how old are you now, Josh? Look, you can't have stuff hurting you when you're running and jumping. Not at 11. Because that's all what life is about when you're 11. <laughs> and if you can't run and jump, you shut down. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. Yeah. 
Iya. Sumber enggak apa-apa. Iya. 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 Sumber enggak apa-apa. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord Jesus. That a rib ain't gonna hurt you no more. Thank you. What must. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Where we thank you for your anointing on Joshi. This a tie. Mombrus day. Now, if anybody ever needs any special prayer, you got sickness or disease in your body, just get in uh, Joshi's prayer line. I'm telling you, I'm not kidding you. You get sickness or disease in your body, no one else is around, or even if other people are around, just get in Joshua's prayer line. So, Joshua, come pray for me, lay hands on me. I tell you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is there. The anointing of the Holy Spirit doesn't, isn't, isn't limited by a person's age. It's limited. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is limited by a person's receptivity. Now, here's what we do. But this is how we've received from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is how we've been taught. We've been taught of the Lord to teach God's people how to hook up with us when we pray. And in doing so, there is a transference of the anointing so that the same gifts of the Spirit begin to operate in your life. That's why we look around, we want people... We don't, we, don't, we don't believe in having big, huge, long lines of people praying for people. We don't believe in that because then everybody's doing their own thing. We believe, in, we believe in a ministry of the body of Christ where there, everyone is following a leader that God has anointed. This is how we've received it from Christ Jesus. Provable in the Word. This is what we received in the Pentecostal movement. We're old-timey. We're not new-timey, Pentecostal movement. We date back 2,000 years. And we just, we, we, we want you to understand that as you do, then Father begins to make manifest giftings through your life that operate both in the church and outside the church. I think that people sit in the seat and they just, somehow they go offline. Screensaver comes up. That's not what we taught you to do here. That's not we've been ministering to you. We've been ministering to you to hook up with us, connect with what God is doing here in the place, to where that every time we pray for somebody, you're praying for them too. And I pray that you'll get, I mean, it, listen, in, in China, in the, in, the, in the Church of China, they got it because, by and large, they've, they've lived under a kingdom mentality. One night I was with Brother Yun in um, uh, in Malaysia. And Brother Yun wanted me to pray for all the sick. After he got finished ministering. And so I did. I wanted to pray for all the sick. And there were 70 house church leaders from China there in the meeting. Because it was actually a gathering where Brother Yun could minister to the house church leaders. They come out of different places, unnamed, because we got the camera on. But, I, you know, I, I was just going to, I just said, okay, everybody, sit, come. There must have been, I don't know, it was hundreds and hundreds of people, multitudes and multitudes of people. I didn't stop to count them, so I'm going to say just multitudes. It was a big meeting. Next thing I know, unbeknownst to me, the 70 leaders had gathered up behind me. And as soon as I laid my hands on a person, they had already formed a triangle behind me. And, I mean, literally a triangle. And the point was right at my back. So, and, and that's just the way they move. And I'm like, this is the church. This is just the church. It's the way the church does it. If, if, 
I mean, that's why the Lord has put the torch in their hand. That's why there's over, I know, it's over 200 million Holy Ghost-filled believers in China right now. 200 million. Holy Ghost, 200 million. That's, all, that's two-thirds of the population of the United States of America. Holy Ghost-filled believers in a nation of 1.3 million, 1.3 billion people. And, and, and it's growing every day. There is a fire of God moving there. And I, I just, you know, I don't, you know what? Wherever the move of God is, I'm going to be there. Amen. I'm a mission. I can, even though I have to be just a missionary to America, you go. I know. I, I know preachers. I know ministers who basically they moved into China. They'd rather live in People's Republic of China. They feel it's more secure. Is that wild or what? Left the United States of America and have moved into People's Republic of China. Great signs and wonders. The Holy Ghost Church of God is powerfully moving. And see, that's why it's such security. When you're in the midst of such a move of God, huh? When you're in the move of such a fire of God. And see, what happens is you get in the church where revival is constantly taking place and that kind of move of God is taking place, you're ruined. You're ruined. And then, you know, I, I, you, you, you have to adjust when you come to America. You have to adjust. But you know what? I want to adjust. Somebody said, tell me, somebody said, it's culture shock, ain't it, coming back. I'm not, I'm in the culture. I'm not backing out. I'm not letting down. I'm not giving up. I'm, I am doesn't matter to me. We got, we got, hallelujah. I have a Holy Ghost meeting everywhere I go. If it's in my living room, I got a Holy Ghost meeting. If it's in the church, I got a Holy Ghost meeting. If it's in my car, I got a Holy Ghost meeting. If I'm in China, Holy Ghost meeting. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Among the, among the cannibals. There's, do you know that there's still cannibals today? There is. They lust after you different. Your elbow looks like a good suit bone. They have a different problem with lust. Are you listening to me? This is just, just as destructive as what goes on in the United States of America. And the Western world. It's just as destructive. Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, I just... My heart burns for Iri and Jaya. Iri and Jaya. Father, Iri and Jaya in, the, in, in 2015. Iri and Jaya, oh God. Let us do Iri and Jaya, oh God. In 2015. Oh God. Iri and Jaya, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Oh God, let a ma mighty moving of your spirit take place in Indonesia. Father, in Iri and Jaya, especially... In Yaraputa, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, shake and prepare Yaraputa right now in Jesus' name. Lusapaya, that they come out of the mountains and out of the caves and out of the jungles. Oh, God. Hallelujah. That the people who've been enslaved by witchcraft and demon worship. Oh, God, let them come. See your love and see your power and see your glory in Jaraputa. Father, kick all the anthropologists out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Vambrusataya. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kurisaya. Kumbanglea. Lura Sikinama. Jaraputa, Father. We pray right now for Irian Jaya, oh God. Hallelujah. So, what are you doing? What are you doing? Well, then you need to begin to mean that you need a masitaya. You need a masitia in makaya. You need a mokia. You need to begin to build yourself up, self up in your most holy faith. I mean, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me today, say, what is she doing? You know, that's really what happens. Huh? Elijah's standing there, right? Right? He's standing there. Lord, I'm the last of your prophets. And they seek to destroy me. God, I've destroyed their prophets. I've torn down their altars. I'm the last one standing. And they're seeking to destroy my life. Huh? The father began to move and a wind came and rent. The rocks so that they exploded. He was not in the wind. And an earthquake came, shook the place. 
Elijah's having a hard time standing. God wasn't in the earthquake. Then a fire came out of the presence of the Lord. And burned strong. God wasn't in fire. Then a still small voice. The Lord said, What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? God expects you to move in faith. Now, in Jesus' name, you begin to build up yourself in your most holy faith now. In the name of Jesus, you don't have time to be minding these other things and doing these other things. It's about high time you become a woman of the Spirit now. And now you're, you're in need of these things. You're in need of these things, and God the Holy Ghost gives you these things. It's not like you're waiting on something. It's rather about you moving in something that has been given, being activated in something that has been given. Hallelujah. And then Brusai. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Get with the program. Get with the signs and wonders program. Ah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Get with the pro program. Get with the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Get with the signs and wonders program. Get with the miracle ministry of Jesus program. Huh? Quit waiting for a day to come. The day, the, my goodness, it happened 2,000 years ago. You'd think something happened 2,000 years ago. We would finally get the memo. After 2,000 years, have you got the memo? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bendecida. In nombre de Jesucristo. Bendecida. Aleluya. Raba su tarde, everything. Hey, Hey, name Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. I pray in Jesus' name. I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name. For the glory of your presence. What's happening, little sister? How are you doing? Huh? ¿Qué pasa? Eh? Huh? ¿Cómo estás? Huh? How are you? Bien. Bien? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say, gracias, el Señor. Say, te amo mucho. Te amo mucho, Jesús. Te amo mucho. Love you, Lord Jesus. Hmm? She's really stubborn. She's a little stubborn? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty common to men. Yeah. What does that mean? That she just doesn't listen quite, or doesn't obey quite quickly enough? Or Huh? Yeah, she doesn't Are you doing pretty good at obeying? I'm doing yeah. You're doing pretty good at obeying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh? He's good. I'm talking about you. No. <laughs> <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Kiss and I. Father, thank you for your blessing. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing on sweet baby. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you help her. Strengthen her. Touch her. Fill her up, oh God, with his presence. Fill her, Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray for the Lord. We pray for the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just lift your hands towards heaven. 
What's up? No, you don't. Then I get Just be filled. Be filled. And then just continue to, continue to be filled. 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 There's more God, more presence of the Lord here than any single human being in this place can even handle. And you're getting whatever you want. You're getting whatever you want. You're getting whatever you have the capacity to receive right now. And our desire is that your capacity would be enlarged, that your heart would be enlarged so that you may be able to receive more. The reordering of your life, the restructuring of your life is essential. Change never comes easy. Change is always difficult. People get into patterns and they just walk those trails over and again. And the Lord wants you to walk in a new direction now. God's asking you to walk in a new direction now. God's asking you to walk in a new direction. God's asking you to walk in a new direction. Mandalese, mandaleki, mandalese pa, mandalese. Eras te prete, lubrest, preseto ne neki she, lubras te rinishi, nondo se te anishi, ludas te anishi pekia. Be a kia, be a kia, and a kotea shea from Nasi, from non jesse, from non jesse brusa ranea, Zizuru sutina, Jesuto dina sita, do sita no monkey can in a icky, Erasera sis de nana ete, Lo standore de epina, Ibreba simbra tequila, Brovandi. So, what is it that you want? You want to tell you what it is? Yes. It's you. <laughs> what do we do about that? Yeah. And nothing but you. What happens when any person gets determined and begins to cry, cry out to God is exactly the same for everyone same thing that happened to me or anyone else who ever began to cry out to God and wouldn't be stopped anymore wouldn't be subdued by the things that are around them by the influences of their own self and their own cares same event happens an encounter with the living God an access into his presence Here's this big question that the Lord asks men. Where's your heart? In other words, where are your passions? Where are your affections? What is it that you want? What are you determined to have and you can't live without? You hollering about that. Yep, you desperate about that. It's true. Go three days without food. You'll find out what I'm talking about. 
go a day without drinking any water, 24 hours. So reality of it is, dear people, in the Western world, Father's asking folks the same thing. People are so overcome with their, their life in this world that they don't know how to break out of it. They don't know how to begin to lift up their voice. They don't know how to get, begin to paste, you know, the, 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 the floor of their living room and take hold of God. There's not enough stirring within the heart to say, I will have that which you've said that is mine. I won't live without it. And, they begin, and then that begins to work within uh, the person's life, a holy emotion, <laughs> a holy indignation. God gets in the big middle of that and begins to show you a whole other way to live. Nothing will change until you change. And that goes for every single person in this place and everybody who's ever come and responded to the things of the Spirit and the call of Christ Jesus to come into the kingdom. The Father will not come and be passionate for you. He will respond to your cry. He will cry, respond to your passion. He will respond to your affection. The responsibility is on your shoulders. What are you going to do? Huh? You're not going to give up. Well, a champion doesn't say, I'm not going to give up. Someone is running a race to win, they don't say, well, I'm not going to give up. Do they say, is that what the person says when they're run, running a race to win? I think they say something like, I'm first. I'm doing it. Huh? I think that the person's about to ready to give up is going to say, I'm, I'm not going to give up. I think that's the way it works. Correct me if I'm wrong. We want to turn this thing around here. They that come to God must believe that He is, that He exists. And He is there to reward anybody who's real with Him. All you need to do is get real, all you need to do is get hungry. All you need to do is get thirsty. All you need to get is passionate. More passionate about the things of heaven, your home in heaven, than your home on earth. More passionate about your purpose in heaven. This, I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to a whole group of people. I'm talking to the church of, uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ in the United States of America. Look, I'm telling you right now, the same things that you're going through right now is the same exact trick that... Satan is actually leveling against everybody in the United States of America to make sure that the kingdom of God, as it would be revealed through the church, will not be expressed. And he won't be stopped. And he'll have a clean free run right up the middle. Huh? So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You want me to help you tell, me tell you what you're going to do? You just don't know. You're stuck. You're going to lay hold on God. You will lay hold on God. You're going, to get, you're going to get passionate. You're going to get emotional about this thing. You're going to lay hold on God. Faith, faith has it. Belief wants it but can't have it. Faith possesses it. <laughs> we can lay hands on you till you don't have any hair. Rub you bald, laying hands on you, nothing's going to change. Until you take that which God has given and you begin to do with it what He's commanded. And you didn't name your firstborn child faith for nothing. It's time to start moving in it. Come on now. Moving in it. In Jesus' name. 
So exactly what do you think you're going to have when you get it? Whatever it is you're looking for. What do you think is going to happen? Huh? What do you think is going to change? What do you think is going to be the new dynamic? The new interaction? What is it going to be? Can you describe it? If you had to put it into words, what is it that you're looking for? What is it you want that you're going after? What will you have once you, once you receive it? No, you can't, can you? No, you're not, are you? Good. Do you know how easy it is to have these things? When you want them with all your heart. That's, I guess that's actually pretty easy, really, isn't it? This is how easy to have it, when you want it with all your heart. Father, I want you to show Nicole the events in her life when she went after something with all of her heart, when she had to have it. When she was willing to step out and do whatever it took and take whatever risk was necessary to have what it was that she felt that she wanted or needed. And Father, I pray that that same kind of passion and that same kind of activation and that same kind of commitment will be directed your way from this day forward in Jesus' name. You'd be strengthened by the Spirit now. God, the Holy Ghost, He's already provision for you. He's already strength to you. Now, you, gotta, you have to move in it. He's not going to open your mouth and cry out through your lips. You, gonna, you have to do that. It's not a hard thing. It's an easy thing. But it is a desperate thing. I just want you to understand. I want everybody in this place to understand something very simple in God. If you can live without the things of God, you can't have them. I'm going to say again to you. If you can live without the things of the Spirit, you can't, you can't have them. If you cannot live without them, they're yours. It's free. This is slow. Mm. Can I say that again? Should I say that again? If you can live without these things of the Spirit, you can't have them. If you cannot live without them, they're yours. It's another way to express hungering and thirsting. There are, those are two passions. Those two passions are greater, more intense passions than any passions known to men. And those passions need to be stirred up in you. So what's up, dear? Okay. Okay. Good. That's exactly what the Lord wants you to do. Let me just say this. You're not going to touch heaven anywhere on the planet easier than you can touch heaven in home, at home. Why wait for another day? Well, I'm going to go home and try this out. I don't get it. I don't get that. I, I, I pray in Jesus' name that you came into the church tonight to have a move of God in your life.
He said, I went to church. What did you meet with God? Because church is meeting with God. If you didn't meet with God, you didn't go to church. I don't care if you stood and sat in the building. Other people might went to the, went to church where you went to church. Hmm? But if you didn't have a meeting with God, you didn't go to church. You sat in the building. Jesus. I'm so blessed that faith is the substance of things not yet seen. Hope for and evidence of things not yet seen. I, I praise God it's the hoopostasis, a place good, firm footing to stand. Huh? Even though, huh? Hallelujah. It's the hoopostasis of things that you're confident in. Barumaranesitipronosaradevredi, Mondo de yela na makila la sist. Bolonga li yela na makila si. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Rava la sita la ist bla. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Evra zu brata sita la. Betus i fritist. Balang de leviti la nom. Balang de tiki de mina nom ast. Well, if you just seek the Lord, if you just commit yourself to Him and you just begin to move in those things which he's instructed you to do in a fellowship with him then there is going to be explosive growth in your life you just stop for a second everybody's falling asleep I want everybody to just stand you guys look like you're falling asleep to me The sleeping church. Lullaby. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Just do something. Just do something in an action in an interaction with the Lord. Just just spend a little time with him. Just spend a little time with Jesus. Come on now, just let's just just go ahead now. Let's just uh, just go ahead and break through into the realms of glory. Let's let's what, what's up? <laughs> yeah, just go ahead and begin to cry out to God. Just ask Him for His help. Just begin to cry out to the Lord. Ask Him for His help. He's here to help you. Just begin to cry out to the Lord. Ask Him for His help. Ask Him for His strength. 
Just begin to ask the Lord for revival, asking for the moving of His, His Spirit in your life and through your life. Begin to cry out to God for a lost and dying world that is unaffected by what the church is doing right now. Begin to cry out to God. The change comes. Begin to cry out to God. Just begin to, just begin to express your earnest need to see a move of God take place. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name that there would come forth such a moving of your spirit, such a cry of the spirit, such a working of your mighty power. Father, we pray that every yoke would be broke. That every hindrance would be removed. Father, without your help, oh God, there's absolutely no way that things will change. Father, without your divine intervention, Lord, you see the paralyzed state, oh God, that many are in. They do not know how to respond to you. They do not know how to move through the hindrances. But Father, we pray in Jesus' name that there would be such a shaking of your presence, such a moving of your spirit that things cannot remain the same, that the heart and mind is activated by the passions of the Holy Ghost. Ibrahim Monsikere Fistai. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, open up the floodgates of heaven upon the souls of your people, oh God, I pray. Right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we cry out, these are desperate times. These are perilous times. Father, these are the days, oh Lord, that we know there must be a crying out and a seeking you if anything is going to be changed, if there's going to be anything saved, oh God. If there's any going to be anything changed, Lord. We know that your people are going to have to begin to seek your face like never before and begin to move with you, Holy Spirit. To begin to flow in the divine power. Tonight, I'm going I'm to ask you, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm pleading with you tonight. I'm just, I want to make sure that this meeting tonight comes to a conclusion in such a way that you do not forget or, or, or you mistake what God is saying. Father's asking for some people who are willing to come into a place where they are continually moved by the presence of the Spirit. They're continually under the influence of the Holy Ghost, steered by Him. <laughs> moved by Him. Touched deeply by him. <laughs> All you and I have to do is be willing. But I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to say once again. There's got to be adjustments made in our life. There's got to be real changes. There's got to be priorities set that are different than they are right now. I'm telling you. Listen to me. Listen. The enemy, the enemy of your soul. The powers of darkness have set themselves to make sure that no revival ever comes to the United States of America, that there's never again a gr another great outpouring of his presence. Satan fights with everything that he has, and there's going to have to be somebody, there's going to have to be a people of God who are more passionate about the purposes of the kingdom of God than Satan is about advancing his agenda. There's gonna, it's, it's going to take a different look, a different sort, a different spirit of people, a different kind of people. 
This isn't about coming to the meeting and being entertained. This isn't about coming to the meeting and seeing a sideshow. And coming to the meeting and hearing some music. This isn't about coming to the meeting and seeing a couple things happen in the spirit. It's about you taking a hold of God. It's about you crying out to God. It's about you becoming a part of the body of Christ. It's about you beginning to function as a member of the body of Christ. It's about you beginning to bring that which God has gifted you with and those things that he wants to gift you with, your life, and yielding yourself to him and letting him have full control of everything that is about you so that he can begin to manifest his glory and power through you. In the name of Jesus. I pray that you I pray right now you get passionate. I pray that you get passionate about this. I pray that you get passionate about it. I pray that I pray that I pray that the things of the spirit are more important to you than getting a husband or a wife. I pray that the things of the spirit are more important to you than any other earthly thing that you could be a could be something that sits deep upon your affections and emotions. Mm mm there are very few people in this place tonight who even realize the events that have transpired, the opposition of the enemy that has transpired in this meeting. Very few people, maybe not any. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I could be even the only one that understands the effects of the things that we have to bust through and deal with. And I pray in Jesus' name that that comes to an end in the body of Christ, that everybody is aware of what's going on and are able to rise up in the anointing the Father has equipped us with. Because we're well, we're well able. We're well able to break past the things that would hinder the flow and the move of God. We're well able to break past the things that would try to subvert people. We're well able to stop the influences of hell and the mind-blinding spirits that would work against everything that Christ Jesus is about and everything that the gospel is declaring. There are souls that came and stood here in line this morning, people who asked the Lord Jesus to come into their life, people who never asked Jesus to come into their life before, ever, until this morning. And, and, and if you don't think of that, those people need, need prayer and intercession and need an affection and a love and a folk that would get down upon their knees and be so concerned about a lost and dying world and go so concerned about souls that begin to pray and intercede for them, then you're mistaken. You're wrong. We want God. We want God. We want you to be interacting with the Lord enough to where He can fill you with these compassions. He can fill you with a consciousness of what's going on in heaven and, and, and an interest of what's going on in the realms of the Spirit because I know all the influences that run, that run interference with that. All of the interests that belong to your own natural life and the concerns and the issues that you have to deal with, the things that may be on the plate tomorrow. I don't even think about tomorrow. I'm, 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 I'm believing that the little Christ Jesus will come tonight. I'm ready to stand before him and give him account for my life. I'm ready to move on into heaven. And I wanted to say this before we close here tonight. You, need to, you, you should not walk out of this building here tonight believing that somehow you've got another 24 hours to live. Or that somehow that things will continue on as they are. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the Lord, first and foremost, the Lord Jesus Christ will come in in a moment. That he's made very clear in his word. Second of all, there's not a person in this place that has given a promise for another hour of life. You do not know what the, you know, no one knows when the, when, when that time, some people just call the biological clock, but no one knows when that time, that appointed time is. When Father is going to say, that's enough. This is the end of your life. You've run your life. You've had your time. You've had your opportunity. It's done for you. No one knows that. I cry out tonight for God's mercy upon every person in this place that no one, that no one would leave here tonight without knowing Christ Jesus, without having their life transformed and, and touched by the blood of Jesus Christ that liberates them from the claims of death upon their soul. I pray that. I, and I pray that, furthermore, that if you were to reject the Lord tonight, if you weren't really willing to give your life over to the Lord, I pray mercy upon your life and that you would have another opportunity. But no one knows that. No one understands or knows 
what well, that day of accountability is for you when you'll stand and give an account for the deeds that are done in your body. Father is without respect to persons. He judges every man according to the deeds that are done in your body. And the Lord says, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Huh. Papa's called us into a realm of trying to help us understand that we were bought with such a precious price. For we were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus. And it's got to touch our passions deeper. It's got to have a bigger impact on us than, than, than tiredness of the body. You got to know, the Father wants you to come into the realm of the anointing. It's bigger than whether you're tired or has more influence than whether or not circumstances are going your way. Because I'm telling you right now, when circumstances can influence you, you'll never be able to influence circumstance. When circumstance can't touch you no more, you can command the wind of the wave. You can command the finances, turn it around. It doesn't matter what it is. As soon as it can't affect you anymore, as soon as it doesn't change your state, your heart, your passion, your place, you have authority over it. Sit is no longer. It can pull its string and make you dance. If there's anything we need to see in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, if there's anything I'm desperate for, is to see maturity. To see God's people come into maturity because we need people who know how to stand in the gap. We need people who know how to make up the edge. We need people who know how to pray in the Spirit and move in the things of the Holy Ghost, who are not ignorant concerning Satan's devices, who recognize when things start going down. In, 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 in a way where Satan's trying to hinder the flow of the Spirit and the moving of the things of God. Well, we need people who know how to stand up and begin to turn the paddle, battle to the gate. We need to see people who know how to turn the lost into a place where they have an encounter with God. As Paul said, I've been anointed to turn men from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. Look, that is, that, that is a place where you and I take a hold of being empowered, strengthened by the Lord. To grow and, 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 and as it says concerning John, wax strong in the spirit. To grow and be strengthened in the spirit. To where you can stand up against a whole nation and turn them to Jesus. One man. One man. Father wants to do it again. Father wants to do it again. You're going to have to break your covenant with this world. You're going to have to break your covenant with the interest in this world. You're going to have to break your covenant. With the things concerning the cares of this life. And come into a new covenant with Jesus Christ. Where you live only for him. There's got these guys, listen to me. You'll know in the very near future. You'll know in the, in the, not in the, in the sweet by and by. But you'll know in the near future. How perilous these days really are. And what Father is preparing people to do. How Father is preparing folks to move into faith. Into a divine ability. In the midst of such a storm that is coming. There is such a storm that is coming. There is such devastation that is coming. That no one can even begin to conceptualize. What's about to break forth on the earth. No one can even begin to understand. Everybody is saying peace and safety. Oh it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Is drawing to a close. The end time is here. Things are drawing to a close. You, everybody can see the handwriting is upon the wall. Everybody can see what's going on. You and I, we the only people, we the people, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we the only kinds of people, let's put it that way, who can turn things around, who can make a difference, and that are going to make a difference in devastation. But I'm going to tell you right now, if circumstances and situations can steal your heart right now, you just out. You're going to be out. You're going to, you're going to be ineffective. You're not going to be able to do nothing. Because this is, this, I mean, if you weary in the day of the footman, what are you going to do when you're trying to run with the horses? I mean, that's, that's kind of thing. If, you, if, you're, if you're troubled and overwhelmed under these, you know, uh, slight opposing circumstances, what are you going to do when there's death and destruction and devastation all around you? People, Father wants to raise up some folks that are strong in the spirit who broke their covenant. They broke their covenant with their affections in this life. And the affections on this earth. If you be risen with Christ, set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. That is very different. That is a very different call than just breaking that pact with the world. This is your affections. This is the cares of life, deceitfulness of riches, 
pleasures of this world. It's your affections. What you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, how you're going to take care of yourself, how you're going to succeed, how you're going to have a retirement plan, how you're going to have a health care plan, all these other things, plans. Plans, plans, plans. Jesus. Just join with me. Come on now. Just step it up now. Step it up. Understand the environment that we're living in. Understand the environment. Understand the time that we are in, the season that we are in. And just take a hold of God. Let the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ begin to be made manifest to your life. Don't come into church all beaten down and cast down just because the Lord's trying to get you out of your ditch. I'm upset because I'm in because I found out I was in my ditch. Oh, well, revelation came to you. You should have got all excited. Now you can get out of your ditch because now you know you're in one. Well, I don't believe I'm in one. I think somebody's just picking on me. No, no one's picking on you. We're lifting any of you up out of the problem. Come, come, rise up. Begin to move in the in, hallelujah. Let us up. Begin to begin to move in the things of heaven. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I hate the devil. I hate sin. I hate the things that he does as he tries to destroy men. And by the help and the grace of God, which we have, we're going to be effective in seeing people delivered out of the hand of the enemy. And we're going to be effective in seeing people, you know, you know, be be taken well, good care of, encouraged, not led astray. In Jesus' name. Well, worship the Lord with your offering. With bless Him with the first fruits of your increase, and bless Him with your offerings. Worship Him in giving, and watch what Father will do with it. He's promised in every act of obedience to, the smallest act of obedience to work the greatest miracles of faith. Amen. So just, you know, move in faith when you're, move in faith when you're praying. Move in faith when you're giving. Move, move in faith when you're doing whatever it is that the Lord sets your heart to do. Move in faith when you're praising. Move in faith when you're praying. Amen. Lando, stay up. Hallelujah. Those of, the, of you that are not in a hurry to go, I just want you to come to the front here for just a minute. I want you to pray with me. I know that some of you got in a hurry to go, but the rest of you, I just want you to come over here to the front with me and pray. Just a minute. Jesus. Jesus. Uh, it's very important that every one of you know that there is a warfare going on. It's very important for every person in this place to recognize that Satan is not dead. And that the angels of darkness haven't given up and gone home. It's very important that everybody in this place recognize that there is a warfare going down. You know, I, I, just, I want to say this. We don't really need anybody outside praying. I need everybody in this room. That's what I need. That's what I want. You know, I, I, somebody came to me and said, well, I'm going to be intercessor for you. I need an intercessor. I need, I need people. I want to see people begin to move with the body of Christ, begin to move and flow under authority under the authority of the Holy Ghost that is expressed when we begin to move and operate and function together by the Spirit with one mind, one mouth. As they begin to lift up their voice with one mouth and begin to praise God. And the sound of the trumpet and the blasting of the instruments all became, as it were, one sound. What happened? And the glory of the Lord filled the place. Mm. So I want you to begin to pray with me. I... I want you to understand that there is a spiritual conflict going on. It's waging over your soul and your effectiveness in the kingdom of God. It's a war waging against any church that stands ready, poised by the Spirit of the Lord to strike and to break out on every side 
as the army of the Lord and begin to rush on a city, climb up the wall, climb through the windows and spoil the place. Hmm. So I want you to just begin to lift up your voice with me right now and, and then begin to ask the Lord to give you wisdom and give you understanding to cause you to have the ability to stand against all that Satan is doing to be able to be a part of turning the battle around to be able to be effective in dealing with all that Satan would do to try to stop you and to try to stop the church and try to st hinder this move and flowing of his power I'm on the sake I want you to begin to cry out and you begin begin to cry out to God for a lost and dying world begin to cry out to God that for revival begin to cry out for God for a mighty moving of his spirit begin to la rosaya farabosatea birimama mane Father, we ask you to come. Lord Jesus, we ask you to come. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I ask you to rise up. Rise up in strength. Rise up in power. Rise up in grace. Father, in your mercy, move past all of our inability. Move past all our weakness. Move past, oh God, all of our lack of insight. And do a work, oh God, that only you can do. Irisaya, ivre mamando lo suya, urubare de kichelo lo mumbro mane. Father, we pray for a lost and dying world around us. Father, we pray for a nation that is in ruin. Father, we pray for a nation that is in peril. Father, we pray for a region, Southern California, that is on the brink of disaster. Father, we pray for a church that's sleeping. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that we would see and understand and know what it is you're doing right now and begin to move with you. That there would be no hindrance there. There would be nothing that would cause us to be silent. Father, that every person would stir themselves up. Take hold of that which you've supplied. Begin to flow and operate in your divine power and glory. <laughs> Father, shake the place. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your glory burn. Let your spirit move. Oh God, once again, as you have in the past, do it again, Father. Father, rise up. Rise up for us, oh God. Oh Father, in divine authority, rise up, oh God. Irisaino Mongadea Ure Mamanda Surevene Keshara da Voro Irive Shoramanda Revishalin and Amrobo Father, may passion be stirred. Father, may passion, may Holy Ghost fervor, may Holy Ghost strength be stirred, may divine power be stirred, may your glory be made manifest, O oh God, we pray. Father, may your judgment flow like a mighty stream. Ure Mamanda Irisaya. Father, we call in our family members. We call in our friends right now. We call in those God around us, Father, everywhere we go, that your manifest power will be revealed through our lives. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. Father, we consecrate ourselves for the purposes of the kingdom of God. Father, to live only for you. To live only for you, O oh God. To have the full meaning of our life defined by you, Lord Jesus. Ibravan Sultan and Ishikin and Amaina. Ababra Menegilio so full. Le Mambrebe de Sail of Monosea. Kirimamangalana and Amanda Yelobo Soto Ronoya. Le Membrebe de Vishidi. I want you to join hands with people around you right now. Just join hands with people around you right now. Just join hands with people around you right now. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that every person that is here in this place gather together with hands joined together. 
Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that they'll begin to pray and intercede for one another. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that it won't just be a casual thing anymore. The desperate need, the desperate hour. Father, the preservation of life, the preservation of souls. Father God, the fire of your presence, the, the moving of your spirit, the working of your mighty power, oh God. Father, we cry out for the working of your mighty power. Shake this place, oh God. Shake, let the shaking of your presence, let the rushing of your mighty presence like a wind that blows and rims the place begin to move here in our midst. Move in our lives, oh God. Take full control, God. Strengthen the work. Strengthen the work, oh God. Strengthen the work. Multiply the work. Make fruitful the hands, oh God, that labor. Increase, oh God, the labors. Increase the fruit and the, re uh, and the reward of the labors, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your precious blood. We thank you for the precious blood that was shed at Calvary for our sins. Father, I pray that everyone will come to understand and recognize, oh God, what you did for us. Can you purchase our salvation, oh God? Oh, Father. I want you to... As, as you... Ha. Ha <laughs> Listen, in Jesus' name, Satan is not going to be able to mock you anymore. In Jesus' name, you're going to begin to move in the authority of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, you're not going to walk blind anymore, but you're going to be able to see very clearly with the discerning of spirits. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of the Liberacasirono. In the name of the Basikarananda Ledigata. In the name of the Sarmene Yoshu. If Reve Vive Kutala Lala Rashara die. Hallelujah. Ambrova Nama Nesaya. Hurrama Mamande de Gurusus. Hurrava Vavada da Sikiridis. Surema Mamma Mandela Namangere. Ura ba 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 
Urababa sotore ne ne me me ne ne me nga. Uraba satara na 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 sempre baya. Uraba satara na 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 ba sempre baya. Ikero mambo va fazebre. Uture mambo bre de 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 kade. Ikero mamos. Father, your fire, your signs, your wonders, your miracles, the working of your mighty power. Oh God, I pray. Urebe de kambla basore. Jesus, Lord Jesus. Mambronai. Mambrenai si. Mambrona sara de. Now, now in Jesus' name, I come out against sickness and disease, flus, viruses, every kind of sickness and every kind of disease, every plague that would try to work. Now in Jesus' name, I speak healing into your body. I, I speak strength into your body. Now in the name of Jesus, you will not fall prey. To virus, you'll not fall prey to flu. You'll not pro fall prey to the sickness that goes out to try to destroy people's lives and ruin people's lives. Now in Jesus' name, you'll not you'll not fall prey to the devices of the enemy. You'll not you'll not fall prey to the things that he would do to try to trip you up, try to distract you. Huh? No, but you're going to take a hold of this realm of the spirit. You're going to take a hold of this realm of divine power and glory and begin to change things around you. Begin to change things in Jesus' name. Right through, that, right through the activity of prayer, there is a power and authority in prayer, though it be foolishness to men. There is a power and authority in prayer that can change everything about this nation in a day. And I pray in Jesus' name that your life and the consecration of your life would result in such an effective prayer. For the, for the prayer, the fervent prayer of a righteous man changes everything. Availeth much. It's power in heaven. It's power on earth. Father, we pray that you make us a praying church, a people so full of prayer and the spirit of prayer. The prayer of the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. Zu mambo prafratai. Zu mandai pe efrate. Zu ramazaha. Everybody. Hidromon sai. Hidromon sai. Hidromon surin. La ramon brofa. Membre de cose. Urebenenje jezila. Hallelujah. Father, we ask you, O oh God, behold their threatenings. Behold, O oh God, the intimidations of the powers of darkness and the enemy of men and the enemy of our souls. And Father, we pray that you stretch forth your hand and that you would grant signs and wonders by your holy child, Jesus. Father, we pray for your fire to rest upon this place. We pray for the mantle of your spirit to rest upon this place. Father, the working of your mighty power that nothing will be hid. Nothing hid in Jesus' name. Uramanzande. Uramanbaremea. Uramanbremenea. Uravaravasirvereveke. Uravaravasirvan. Now, I just want to encourage you. I want to call you to understand that any time, anywhere that a group of people begin to start taking a hold of God for revival, for an outpouring of a spirit, when they begin to start uh, standing up before the presence of the Lord and say, Lord, here we are. Use us. Spearhead this thing through us. You've got to understand that it's going to be met with every kind of opposition that Father will allow. And, the, uh, and I'm going to tell you right now, He will allow enough to where that you're going to have to be in some serious, earnest, fervent, Holy Ghost prayer meetings and not just once a week. Because it just it simply is going to take you out. I mean, the opposition will take you out. And, you're, and I want you to join up with me this time. I want you to join up with me. I want, you to, I want you to go after this with me this time. This time around, I want everybody to gather up. 
I'm gra grab a hold of yourself in Jesus' mighty name. I mean, hit your knees in the morning. Understand that it, it I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's just not just a requirement. It's essential. <laughs> it's necessary. Th these things are going to be, these things are going to come forth in the earth because if people know how to walk with God in such a way, they know how to give themselves over through prayer and the things of the Spirit so that the Holy Ghost can strengthen them to be able to stand all the stuff, stand against all the stuff that Satan is going to do, mark my words, that he's going to do to try to stop as many as he possibly can from moving forward, to try to disrupt, to try to pollute. But just listen to the Lord, we've been prepared for such a day as this, for such a time as this, so just be full of the Spirit. Huh? There's a way to redeem the time. The Lord told you three weeks ago in preparing you and getting us ready for the things that he wants to do. He said there's a way to redeem the times because the day is evil. And he said it very clearly. He said, don't be drunk with wine wearing his excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Just be filled with the Spirit, speaking yourself in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, sing and make a melody in your heart. Hallelujah. Just hum your way into heaven. Ha -ha. Just hum your way into heaven. Ha -ha. You don't have to be concerned about what the powers of darkness are doing. Ha -ha. You don't have to be concerned what the power of the darkness is doing when you hum and you're way into heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fura basa. When you beat all of them. When you're being continually filled. Well, amen. amen. Find a bunch of folks around you. Hug them. Tell them that you love them. Bless them in Jesus' name. Mambredeya. Irisaya. Prokodoye. Brisa durinindis.